Brooks, and I tell you what, he's uh, he's had some office, uh, awesome numbers to put up this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing this game. I can't wait for it to get started. Both those guys were players of the week. Merritt as the special teams player of the week, and Wilkes as the offensive player of the week, so they both put up very impressive performances last week. Speaking of impressive performances, the third member of our broadcast team is down on the field. Let's check in with Jim Cavallo. Thanks, Bob. I'm down here with a man who's very excited, not just about Valdosta State football, but about Division II football in general. Dr. Zachary, the president for Valdosta State University. Why are you so excited about Division II football? We were talking about this a little bit before this interview began, and you said that it's just an exciting atmosphere here and around the country. Well, I've been uh, president of two different universities now, both with Division II athletic programs, and recently uh, Dr. Miles Brandt, uh, the president of the National NCAA Association, just invited all of the D2 presidents for a summit meeting in Orlando, had a great meeting and talked about the future of D2. Uh, we want to elevate and, and focus on the great job that we all do in athletics and academics in D2. And I really want to thank you, Jim, for bringing this, this uh, television product to Valdosta State. We welcome you to the campus this evening. Uh, we have been able to watch several of the telecasts doing a super job, and it's helping us elevate D2 to some national prominence, and it's just a, a good time for us. I've been very involved with some national association committees. We're looking at how we can continue to promote Division II athletics across this country and talk about the great job we do on each of the campuses. Well, Dr. Zachary, one of many people that are very excited about this game between the Lions and the Blazers tonight, a championship caliber game, not just for the conference, but for the country. Oh, and I've, I've been here for four years, followed Chris Hatcher and, and the Blazers football team with great interest. We have a wonderful coach, probably one of the most exciting coaches in American football. Uh, every year, Chris and I have a summit meeting at the end of the season about um, how many offers he's going to receive, and we always talk about uh, the new stadium that we're planning to build now and all the opportunities he will have to continue to be the coach of the Valdosta State Blazers. So um, Chris is, uh, is one of those guys that ignites the football field, ignites the players, and we're very proud of what he's accomplished. Tonight, it is going to be a battle of the defense and a battle of the offense. I mean, it's a, it's a classic example of what D2 can do for sports. Well, there's an aura of excitement on the field. I'm going to send it back up to you, Bob, let you take the excitement from here. All right, Jim, it is an exciting night. We've got great players, great coaches, two teams that have put gaudy records on the board, not only this year, but in the two previous seasons. We're looking for some offensive fireworks tonight. It's the number three Blazers hosting the number 14 Lions from Valdosta State. The kickoff is next on the Gulf South Conference. Game of the week. Back here in Valdosta, Georgia, just set for the kickoff between North Alabama and Valdosta State. Take a look at the head coaches for UNA. Mark Hudspeth is in his fourth year, 28 and 14. He was the National Coach of the Year in 2003, a 1992 graduate of Delta State. We'll take a look at his keys to the game, Jess. Well, there's no question they, they feel like that they got to get off to a fast start. That's the key. They, they got to come out and put some points on the board quickly. They got to win the kicking game. And the games that they have won, they had six, they're six and zero when they've won the kicking game. They got a guy back there deep ready to catch this kick, number 21, Anthony Merritt. That he is dangerous. And the guy kicking off to him, Michael Green. We watched him in pregame. He he may put this thing in the end zone. Well, we'll see. Well, let's take a look at his counterpart, Chris Hatcher. Not only 66 and eight in his sixth year as the head coach here, but has the highest winning percentage of any coach in the country at Division I or Division II. So a, a great program. He feels they got to limit their turnovers, and if they can keep from giving up the big play, they know they can put some points on the board. They are an explosive offensive team, but North Alabama is first in the conference in offense, so they will have their hands full there as well. We're about ready to kick it off and set to kick it off for Valdosta. They will, as you can see, be wearing the dark jerseys going to our left. Number 43, Michael Green, and as you said, Jesse, he was just pounding them in pregame. He was making field goals from 55 yards as if they were walking the park, but that guy ran another punt back for a touchdown last week, and he is something special, Anthony Merritt, and that makes six now that he's run back from uh, punt returns, which is a new conference record. We're set to go on a beautiful night. It is clear, it is warm, and here we go. And Merritt's going to get a crack at it from about his five. Not able to turn the corner, brought down not quite at the 20. Very good coverage on that kick. Brought 
touchdown by number 23, Kevin Atkins, as you take a look at the quarterback, Vinny Saylor, guy who has put some impressive numbers up on the board, 63% completion. How about that turnover, the, the touchdown to a, a interception ratio, Jesse? 16 touchdowns, only four picks. He's, he's, he's protected the football, and they only give up six sacks for the entire season as much as they throw the football, so he also gets rid of the ball very quickly. The give is to Blunt. Demarcus Blunt is out to about the 25. Good gain on the little delay there as we take a look at the offensive lineup for the Lions here. Mask, Wilkins, Ankar. Ankar was a preseason All-American in some of the publications. Bates and Reed. You just saw Blunt carry the ball there. And Merritt, we've already talked about him. Long, Messing, and Fountain. And we've talked about uh, what a terrific job Merritt has done running back kicks and punts. He's also the leading receiver on this team. So he's multifaceted. They fake to Blunt this time. Under pressure, and he gets it away. But good pressure that time. Number, number 55 in there, Carlos Russell, putting great pressure on as we get a chance to take a look. I think 91 was in on there, too. That's Tim Thompson. Tim Thompson, the yes, preseason all-conference player. Now that guy can put some heat on you as well. That's a big key here, puts pressure on him early. We saw the front line, and I hear the backers, McNeil, Cullen, and Daniels, and the secondary, Harris, Foss, Harris, and George, Antoine, and Sean in the secondary. As they face now a third down and a long four. Sailor going to look to throw it. Oh, it's going to be ruled an interception, I believe it is. Beautifully timed defensively by Jason McNeil, who gets the pick and the first turnover of the game goes to the Blazer defense. Talk about that coverage, Jesse. What a well, great they, job he did. Watch it here. They did a great job. They just brought four people, and as you can see, they didn't get close to the quarterback, but he just, you know, he throws the ball into coverage, and, uh, oh, man. Tried to He's thread right the needle the between a couple of defenders, not able to do it, as now Barrett Wilkes and the Valdosta explosive offense will go to work with great field position off of the turnover less than a minute into the game. You know, neither one of these teams ever huddle, so it's one of those things. This <laughs> Everything will be called from the sideline. The players will never go in the huddle. It's amazing to watch two spread offenses. Wilkes threw that one a little behind the receiver, but he's put some gaudy numbers of his own up there. Not quite the turnover to interception ratio of his counterpart, but 70% completion. He takes it as a personal insult when he throws it. It's not a completion. That one, though, was a little off the mark. Second down from the 30. I would imagine both of these teams are a little nervous starting the game because of the, the, the magnitude of it, because somebody after the night is not going to be in the race anymore with two losses. Screen here, well defended by number 34, who does a great job. Courtney Wright holds that to a very small game. That was a very, very good defensive play in the fact that the defenders did not drop back out of there. They hung in there for the screen pass, expecting the screen pass and taking care of it. Diagnosed it perfectly as you got to look at the offensive line. There are the backs and receivers, Milton Brown, Taylor Reynolds, and Arndt. As Valdosta faces a third and nine, and this would be seemingly a very long field goal, but based on what we saw in the pregame, there's a flag on that play, evidently. I'm not, they're facing one way, but they indicated the other way, so I'm hesitant to define what it is. Thomas Graham, our referee today, now they back it up. dead ball foul and that's going to make it third down so they don't get to repeat the down because it was a dead ball foul but as significantly Jesse we were talking about that ball was on the 30 that would have been a 47 yard field goal and based on what we saw in warm-ups that would have been a walk in the park for Michael Green now even he is at a field goal range so they are faced with a third and 25 and they've got some serious ground to make up just to get back in field goal range well you can kind of expect the I think North Alabama would defend this. They're not going, they don't want to give up anything big. They don't want to give up a big play here. That was a big key. So they'll probably just rush three or four people. There they come with four. They get significant heat on. Well defended again. Good aggressive defensive play by number 11, Marcus Jackson on the hit. Makes it just a five yard gain. As you take a look now at that defense for the Lions. He's a good look at Jackson. Boy, he's a heck of a player, too. He's preseason all-conference. 6'3", 245 pounders. Does an excellent job. Jackson, Freer, Tanner, and Hunt. Tharp, Borden, and Wright. 
and Campbell, Ashford, Suggs, and Farris. Farris was a preseason All-American in some publications as well. Valdosta will kick it away. Tidwell just trying to pooch one inside the 20. It's going to bounce, but not take a bounce for the Blazers. And, uh, well, it does manage to creep inside the 20. Still barely rolling along, but it'll get it down to about the 16. So Tidwell does pin him inside the 20, and we'll get to our first timeout. Just two minutes and three seconds into the ballgame. We've already had a lot of action, including a turnover, but no scoring. It is a scoreless tie between two teams that are tied for first place in the Gulf South Conference. Back here in Valdosta, where we talked about the explosive offenses, 30 points a game for Valdosta, 37.3 for North Alabama. But, oh, by the way, these teams are first and second in defense as well. North Alabama just 13.4 points allowed, Valdosta 14.5. So we, sh we shouldn't be surprised. Some good defense early as Blunt takes it right up the middle for a decent gain. Out across the 20, almost to the 25. Front down by McNeil. McNeil's been very active defensively. You know, we don't want to take anything away from the defenses because I can assure you that Valdosta up front has excellent pass rushers, and that's one of the things that's key of this game is going to be putting pressure on the quarterback. Obviously, you just saw him run for five yards. It didn't need to get the running game going. Take some pressure off that quarterback. Actually, it's a pickup of eight by Blunt, but this time he's got nowhere to go, and he's going to give some of that back. Nice penetration that time. And again, boy, Jason McNeil's been all over the field. He was involved in it, but also number 52, Michael Cullen. And that loses three of the eight that they originally gained, and so it brings up a third and five. Yes, Michael Cullen, an excellent middle linebacker, number 52. Uh, they have excellent front people, linebacker, got great secondary. You know, they don't have any real all-stars, and there's necessarily as many of them, but they got a couple. But they're a good football team on defense. Long and Merritt down out to the right now for Sailor. He swings it out this way to Blunt, and they defend it terrifically. I'm just going to tell you, why don't they just uh, put a graphic up for number 35, McNeil, on the screen, because he's involved in every play. <laughs> there he is again, and st limits that to no gain or a small loss, actually. There's a flag on the play, though. Yeah, nope. motion. yeah it's going to be a legal motion, but they're going to obviously decline that and force him to punt. Watch it again. Watch me. Jesse, you talked about he has been making some good reads. He's out sure. there. An open field tackle. The penalty's declined, and now they'll kick it away. Lyle Atkinson back to punt. He averages 36.2 yards a kick, and this one's off the side of his foot, and a very poor punt that is not going to get them very much. I think they're going to mark it out of bounds. They're still walking back. Still walking back. Wow. 30-yard line is where they're going to say that one went out of bounds. That's going to be, I think, about a 7-yard kick, Jesse, and that's essentially like a turnover. As we get a look at the conference standings, we talked about that log jam up at the top. Five teams tied for first. You see Valdosta and North Alabama. Arkansas Tech, West Georgia off to a great start, and Central Arkansas. And how tough it is just to get an NCAA bid, yeah, even if true. you're among the top teams in this conference. And, and you know, I know <laughs> there's no question that Mark Hudspeth said before the game that it's important to get off to a quick start, and here he is right away with two actual turnovers, a turnover and a punt that only goes to the 30-yard line. You know, the, the Feathers thing from a quick start. Absolutely. They wind up with a nice gain out of that. Didn't look like there was much there. But he gets it down about five yards, does Vincent Brown. Brown averages about 6.3 yards a carry. He's one of the captains of this team. Oddly, has no rushing touchdowns, though. So inside the red zone, he's not the guy they depend on to, to punch it in. But he got a good gain there. This is two possessions in a row now that Valdosta is starting from the North Alabama 30. They can't come up empty again, Jess. Those are no. wasted opportunities. Well, that old saying of the team that kicks off first usually scores first. It looks like it's going to happen here <laughs> after about two or three turnovers. A uh, fumble here. You, you might have jinxed them. Oh. Then you put the kibosh on them, Jess. <laughs> they look like they were going forward. Now, they have lost the five yards they originally gained, and then some. Wilkes fumbled the football on the fake, and they lose... Six yards, so now they'll be faced with a third and 11. There it is. He was faking to Vincent Brown, and the ball winds up on the ground. He picks it up and turns it into a six-yard loss, third and 11 now. It's two teams right now that are showing nerves, in my opinion. They, they're they just so tight because this game has such a significant meaning in the conference race. Uh, they got to loosen up and play football. It is tremendously important. 13-1 and one two years ago with the Lions, 13-1 and one in national champions last year. The Blazers hit as he throws, and there's no one there. Good penetration defensively. 
Wilkes' pass was incomplete. Brett Borden was in there pressuring the throw. And so three plays, they lost a yard. And now this is going to be interesting because we talked about Green was banging them from long distance in the warm-up. This would be a 48-yarder, and he's going to try it. And if he kicks it at all like he did in warm-ups, he'll have plenty of leg on this one, Jesse. He sure will. We better get a good snap. That punt a few minutes ago, uh, the first punt, the snap was kind of a little over high. We'll have to see. Got to hope for a good snap. All this is important. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Felton, the holder. The long snapper is Will Weaver. It's a good snap that time. He's got plenty of leg on it, as we said. And it is right through the middle. That is what we saw in warm-ups. Sometimes they say bad rehearsal, good performance, or the other way around. This was a good rehearsal and a good performance by Green. That was a fine snap, good hold, and he had plenty of distance on that one. So first blood goes to Chris Hatcher's team. 3-0 as the defending national champions have the early lead. Well, the first team on the board, Valdosta State. The Blazers get a kick that in, in the replay, as I watch, didn't make it quite through the middle by as much as I thought, but still had plenty of leg by that man, Michael Green. We talked about watching him in warm-ups, and he was consistently making them from 55 yards out without much strain. So he's got plenty of leg. The six-foot senior from Orange Park, Florida, just makes his 10th field goal of the season. And you talked about uh, the coaches in the pregame talking about the importance of the kicking game. Well, there's no question that uh, uh, North Alabama has won the kicking game six times, and in that six times they won the game. And the one time they didn't, they did not win. That's their only loss. So six. right now they're behind in the kicking game. Uh, a bad punt followed by a long field goal. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard. This guy can change things, though. Number 21, Merritt takes it on a hop. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that is the last thing you'd expect from that guy. Merritt took it at the five, started upfield, and fell down. He is a guy who was the special teams player of the week last week. Watch it again, Jesse. Just turf monster got him. Yeah, absolutely. Right there, and not the NFL. He is not getting up and going anywhere. And now with another big hole for their team. He ran a punt back for the sixth time for a touchdown last week, which was is a, 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 a Gulf South Conference record. But you got to really put that in perspective. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But how... Infrequently, that's happened in the history of the school, and now he's done it in two and a half seasons. Yeah, they, you know, he was a defensive back until this year. Then he moved to receiver. They got the blitz coming. Looks out. Oh, what a hit that was. Jerron Fountain showed some concentration and some guts to hang on to that one. But, boy, was he drilled by Sean Harris. <laughs> Watch this again, Jess. Well, that's a great play by the defense. They... They uh, comboed the, the receiver, had a guy inside, a guy out. He, he wasn't going anywhere. What a hit. Oh. They are fired up here at Valdosta. This is a game with tremendous ramifications for both these teams. Two losses in this league with a five-way tie for first. That's tough to overcome. Sailor with a nice fake there. Got the defense to buy it and open up some running room for himself. Takes it out to about the 14, close to a first down. That's the option play that we talk about out of the shotgun where they fake the back in there and read the defensive end. If he closes, the quarterback keeps it. Of course, Wilkes did a great job that time. Actually, the wrong guy. Kenny Sailor did a great job. They need a first down bad. They really do need one on this third, and they're calling it two. Sailor with a quick look to his left. He's got a man, but will it be enough? I don't think so. Boy, they are flying to the football. That is a terrific reaction by number nine, Wayman Ford, the junior from Suwannee, Georgia, who makes sure that is no question that's not a first down. Take a look at this that's again, Jess. Great pursuit out of the defense. And, of course, the quarterback getting hit again right as he throws the football. These two defensive teams right now are really playing aggressive good sound football well you hear that term all the time from defensive coordinators we need to fly to the football you watched it on that there were five black jerseys there before the football got to the receiver they are flying to the football and they turn that into a loss as they'll kick from their own end zone that was almost a safety taking the snap on the knee good punt though gets it out over the 50 and it's fumbled still no signal it's still on the ground boy that was, mm, that was a great punt that was a terrific punt. 
and he got it. Wasn't he? Didn't seem to be comfortable handling the snap. Watch it again. And now here's the fumble. That ball's past the 50-yard line. There were two players that were real close to him. They weren't interfering with him, but obviously he he, uh, he knew he wouldn't. He better make a catch and get down quick. Great coverage out of great coverage out of North Alabama. They do recover the kick, does Valdosta though? So they kind of dodge a bullet there. They get it at their own 40. But that was a terrific job by Lyle Atkinson, punting his team out of trouble from his own end zone. Does not make makes up more more than makes up for that first punt that went off the side of his foot. He digs them out of a big hole here. First down now at the Blazer 40. Hit in the backfield, but he gets away, but there won't be much there for number 14, Brown. No, there's also the option they handed the football off. But boy, there was nothing there. Brown, the leading rusher for this team. Over 350 yards rushing coming into tonight. Averages 6.3 yards a carry, but that was well defended. Gain of a yard. Now you take a look at Chris Hatcher. This guy who's going to be inducted into the Division II Hall of Fame in December. He's already in the Hall of Fame here at Valdosta, leading them to their first national championship last year. And was a great, great player here as well. He also coached a great quarterback up at Kentucky for a couple of years few years ago. Eric Kraut. Ball is taken by Callaway. And that is going to be out near the 50 and close to a first down from where I'm sitting. And the marker is almost directly in front of me. It appears to be about uh, a half a yard short. So they'll call it third and one. He said that about Valdosta's offensive line. They've had a few injuries there, and yet they're still protecting their quarterback very well right now. Take a look at the play clock. They get it off. Oh, right up the middle. That almost turned into a big game for Brown. Easily a first down. There's a flag after the play. Some more extracurricular activity. Number 61, C.A. Sanders clapping his hands for the Blazers. We'll see if he is correct in assuming it's going to add some more yardage to this play. It's really important these players keep their composure tonight because there's so much riding on this game. You know the emotions are at an all-time high, so they've got to, got to keep their poise. I guess you could say, and Vincent Brown is a prime example of that, and so is Barrett Wilkes, the quarterback for Valdosta State. Wilkes is coming back from a depth chart situation where he was the starting quarterback in 2003 for the Blazers, and then gave up his starting position in 2004 for Florida State transfer Fabian Walker. Wilkes decided to red shirt, save his eligibility, and see what Fabian Walker could do with his team from the year before. Well, Walker took him all the way to a national championship, and Wilkes is back this year. He's been battling with Lewis Cooper, and of course, winning the job from Cooper, who has been asked to leave the team recently for private reasons. Vincent Brown, on the other hand, made some big plays on this drive, is a running back who's come back and forth from 
ankle injuries this year, and he's back in this game from a high ankle sprain. He's already made some big plays, and the Valdosta State Blazers are looking forward to make some more. Bob? That's a big play there. Sherrod Reynolds with the catch. Certainly looks like Wilkes is starting to relax, Jesse. That was a well-thrown ball. Takes it down to the 30 and another first down. That was a great read by Wilkes. They had a blitz on, and he had to double slant, and he read it perfectly and hit the receiver on the break. Give that time is to Milton. He's been an effective rusher for this team as well. He averages six yards a carry. He's got two Milton rushing Milton touchdowns. He's the second leading ground gainer for this team. A small gain there. Picks up about two. Wilkes has been the offensive player of the week twice this year. And last week was 31 for 40, 338 yards and three touchdowns. And leading the Blazers to their seventh win of the season and upping their conference record to five and one. Makes the delay, looks, has a man, and he's going to be in for the score. Number 15, Clay Calloway, and as I said, Wilkes is starting to look a lot more comfortable. That was a well-thrown ball, and Calloway takes it all the way to the house. 9-0 now for the Blazers. You don't want to blitz him too much. <laughs> He'll find that open receiver, and that's why we had a poster out there that the man-to-man coverage. Got any help in the middle of it. Owned the money. Green on to try for the point after, and so far it has been all Blazers. And that is good. 10-0. A turnover, a muffed punt, but that was just a good 60-yard drive. That puts the first touchdown on the board. Up for the Blazers on the good reception by Callaway. 10-0, Valdosta. you're not going anywhere, but in case you were tempted, keep in mind that UNA, who's trailing in this game, averages 37 points a game, so there's still plenty of football to be played as you take a look at the last scoring drive by Valdosta. Seven plays, 60 yards, Callaway with the 28-yard touchdown reception in a little under three minutes. We still have four and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. We've had lots of action, so there will be lots more to come. And that young man right there, Thatcher, absolutely fantastic young football coach that 89% of your wins, brother, he knows how to put a team together to win a football game. He's 32 years old, the Harlan Hill winner in 94. His Merritt's going to get another chance. This side just inside is 10. And he still can't get it across the 20-yard line. We, we talked earlier about putting in perspective how dominant he has been. In the history of this program, they had eight punts returned for touchdowns between 1969 and 2002. Merritt, in two and a half years, has already run six back himself. Yeah, <laughs> that is. That's remarkable. That is amazing, but you got to give it to Valdosta. Kickoff coverage, number one in the Gulf South Conference, 17.4, and they say, we're going to kick it to him, and we're going to tackle him, and they've done it on the first three. three well, twice, <laughs> once he fell down, but they have covered it very well. Again, not very good field position on their own 18. He's got a man that time just in and out of the hands of number 24, Jason Messing. Sailor almost put together a big gain on first down. Yeah, he caught him in cover two, which means they, they were just, uh, shallow the coverage and a cutter behind. He put it right in the seam between them. He read it perfectly and got the ball right on the money. It could have been caught, but it had been a tough catch. They have put uh, the ball in a lot of different receivers' hands. Merritt, Fountain, Chip Long, Messing. Messing's caught 18 balls, including four for touchdowns. So they got a lot of guys who are dangerous in that passing game. Second and ten now. Boy, they're me they're messing with their minds right here. Merritt, there's no one covering Merritt. <laughs> but they're going to come after him quick. Oh, that is a head knocker there, but a nice job of hanging on to the football by number 83, Chip Long. I mean, there was literally no one covering Merritt out there at one-on-one. -on -one. However, they rotated into something very quick to take care of it. Well, Jesse, you were talking about the need to get a first down, get some of that momentum back. They did with that play. Takes the ball out to the 29, and a nice catch by Long in traffic. See his numbers there. They are really disguising their coverages, mixing up what they're doing, making it tough for the quarterback to read. Just off the fingertips of Demarcus Blunt. Got to mention Demarcus Blunt. Coach says before the game he's about 80%. He's still not totally recovered from an ankle sprain, but he wants to play. 
80% of Blunt is usually pretty effective. <laughs> this one just off his fingertips. Both these teams, as we said, explosive offensively, but we don't want to shortchange the defense. They do a lot of things well defensively. Valdosta State has recorded 20 sacks on the season, so they can put pressure on the quarterback. 22 Wilson's in motion. Hit as he throws. That is well over the head of his intended receiver, Messing, but they really put a lick on Saylor that time. Number 32, Antoine Harris in putting the heat on, almost on cue. I said they have 20 sacks on the season. They almost made it 21. Watch the shot he takes here. Boy, he hit him right in the rib cage. Didn't he? Oh, my. That'll make you short arm one next time. But not his guy. He's been hit before. I, I say that I, because that's what happened in most cases. This guy is a tough competitor. He'll stay in there and throw the football. Well, we talked about the interception. We got a flag now. We will see what this is about as the coaching staff for Valdosta animated about something. I'm not sure what. It appears there may have been an illegal substitution of some kind. Uh, I can't imagine what the penalty is. We'll hear it. Here we, here's our answer. There is no foul in the play. Foul out the state on the timeout prior to the substitution. All right, so there's your answer. Thomas Graham tells you that you called a timeout at Chris Hatcher's bunch. I think he had 12 people out there on the field, and so and to avoid a timeout, called, I mean, to avoid a penalty, called timeout quickly, which was a very, very smart move. It's a good thing to do. To, uh, to avoid <laughs> taking uh, uh, the penalty there. This, these two teams have had a remarkable and, and explosive history, very close. As dominant as Valdosta State has been in recent years, UNA still leads the overall at 13-10-1. But as you, we've said of late, Valdosta's been so good winning four of their last five. Last year's game was a terrific game. 24-20, Valdosta won it. They were trailing 13-3 in that game. Vincent Brown ran a kickoff back 97 yards to make it 13-10. Then a rather surprising onside kick. There was still plenty of time left. They put together a 54-yard touchdown drive to take the lead 17-13. To the Lions' credit, they scored to retake the lead 20-17. But then Valdosta put together a 78-yard drive and scored with 32 seconds left in the game for a dramatic 24-20 win on the road. And seven of the last 15 times these teams have played, they've both been nationally ranked. So they have had some great games with some very good teams. Third down and 10 now from the 29. Three-man rush. Defending. Go make it tough to get anybody open. He has a man that time. Nice throw on the move to number 83 long. And he turns it into a big game. Nice job by Saylor to just roll to his right, buy some time for himself, and made an accurate throw on the move. The perfect word, buy some time, because they definitely had him covered. He was only rushing three people. Had, had eight people back there in coverage. Had to give some time to him, and he gave him some time. And, you know, after getting hit like he did a while ago, to, hey, to do that, what a great competitor he's got to be. A nice, a, a nice throw on the move, and Long turned it into a good game. That's a nice play defensively. Number 91, Tim Thompson, one of the captains for this team. Says, not through me you're going with that one, and turns it into a no gain. He drove him back about seven yards, but his forward progress is going to be the original line of scrimmage. Those two defensive ends, 91 and 42, uh, Thompson and Morrison, they, they're they're class players in the Gulf South. I'm telling you, those guys, we talked about them against Delta State. Every time we looked up, they were putting pressure, and same thing is going to be true tonight. These two guys have got to play well to, have it, to, to be able to stop North Alabama's offense. Dedrick Morrison is also one of the captains on this team. That was really no gain. This is going to be either a big gain or a big loss, Jess. It's one or the other. I think it's going to be a loss. Nowhere to go for number four, Jerron Fountain. He was shaking and baking to no avail. Very, very good. They are just every play, it seems, just two and three guys flying to that football. Well, that was a little quick screen out there, and, and they had it perfectly defended. There was no place for him to go. Of course, he would have been better off than just going forward and taking what he could get, but you know, obviously trying to make a big play to run and lose a couple of yards. But he's made them before, I'm sure. <laughs> he's going to outrun them all, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, Fountain has turned some big plays, in, in short passes into big receptions. He's got four touchdown receptions on the year. Under pressure, and he's going to throw that away. And there's that guy you were talking. Well, actually, that's different. That's Kelvin Roberts that time in on the hit. 
and Fountain, uh, uh, excuse me, Vinny Saylor slow is slow getting up. He's taken quite a pounding in the first 13 minutes of this game. And he is obviously feeling the after effects of that one. We had a flag down here. We, we I didn't see what it was, but uh, obviously it appears to be against Valdosta. Lance Hankar gives the signal that it is against Valdosta. The big offensive lineman for North Alabama, but he's not in a striped shirt, so we will wait to see what Mr. Graham's got to say. Always have to sit in front of you. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Mr. Hatchery, very happy. No, it's not in front of his bitch. <laughs> Whoa, it's a big one. That's going to move the chains. Takes what would have been an obvious punting situation into a first down now. Called the illegal substitution, I believe, was it not? We didn't hear anything. I believe that's what he's called, illegal substitution. That's the only thing it could be for a 15-yard penalty without a personal foul. We're going to discuss it again. Well, that's always a good thing first to do. Down for North Alabama. Charles Rice and Thomas Graham in a bit of discussion here. Well, I believe Rice is selling, but I'm not sure Hatcher's buying. <laughs> Well, I, I can't think of anything it could have been other than the fact they had 12 people uh, on the field because uh, that was the only thing that would necessitate a 15-yard penalty. It cost Hatcher his gum. The gum popped out of his mouth. He's so upset. It's not going to change the result. It's a first down now at the 36. That could be a very significant play here, keeping the drive alive. He's got time that time. Puts it right on the money. I am really impressed, though, with this defense. They... You may get a pass there, but you catch it, and they are right on top of you. Sean Harris there on the coverage, a nice throw. Good reception by Long, and it's going to be awfully close to a first down. But, Jesse, there's not a lot of room to work. And and that quarterback has got to get it rid, rid of it under pressure. I'm telling you, now, there's somebody in his face on every throw. The only time there wasn't was one time when he rolled out and got it, bought himself some time. I guess the three-man rush. we got another penalty, looks like. No, I think it's a no, measure. Oh, measurement, right? okay. And, oh, I, as I've said, I'm a big fan of that second and inches because there's a lot of things you can do on that, and I think that's what they're going to wind up with here. Yeah. Good. You know, I'm glad we don't have to catch a plane tonight. We may not make it because that's... <laughs> this is uh, a docudrama is breaking out here tonight. You're right about that. We're going to be here a while. But fortunately, these are two entertaining teams, so settle in and enjoy it with all of us. The Gulf South Conference Game of the Week with Jim Caval. Jesse Branch, Bob Valvano in Valdosta, Georgia. You probably might be wondering if this is Valdosta's home game and their colors are red, white, and black. Why is there gold and black around much of the stadium? They share this very nice facility with the Valdosta High School team known as the Wildcats. So that is their colors, and they are a wildly successful program, Jess. They, they really are. Num numerous uh, national championships. Yeah, I think they've won over 800 games in the history of the school. That's unbelievable. Second and very short, and this is where you can have some fun. If you're an offensive coordinator, take a chance. Let's see how creative they get. That's pretty straightforward. That'll get them the first down. Blunt takes it inside the 25. Number 62. Boy, they gang Mel Daniels. They gang tackled. There were four guys in on that hit that time, and I'm telling you, Mr. Thompson came in and put a headgear right in the rib cage. I mean, it's, 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 they, they, are, they are swarming to the football, even though this drive is still alive, that big third down penalty. But we'll see if the Lions can take advantage of it. Here's Fountain. Turned the corner a little bit, got a decent gain out of it. He's going to be up to around the 17-yard line. Pick up of about six or seven, I think. Let's go down to the sideline with Jim Caval. Jim? Oh, Bob, talking a little bit about the running backs and wide receivers for the North Alabama Lions, one of the most talented ones is in the backfield, number one, Demarcus Blunt. But Blunt has been inactive for most of the season. High ankle sprain, just like Vincent Brown, the tailback for Valdosta State, has kept him out of action. He sets all kind of records this season in the beginning and then goes out with the injury. He's back tonight, and he said he's not intimidated about playing with the successful players like Jerron Fountain and Anthony Merritt because he's been playing with them his whole career, and he enjoys having the, the, the opportunity to take attention off of them tonight and open up some big plays for those guys. So 
We'll see what happens as he gets the first down there and now makes another successful run. Bob? All right. That was, in fact, Blunt, as you said, Jim, who got the first down. He's got six rushing touchdowns, so if they get it inside that five, he's the guy you'll want to look for. A first down at the 11, and, boy, that penalty now could prove to be very costly for Valdosta. And, you know, this team is so good in the red zone. We've talked about it every time we've had them, but uh, they've scored 30 out of 36 times, and they get it down there, 21 touchdowns. So uh, they feel very comfortable when they get it inside the other team's 20 yard line. Sailor with the give that time to Eric Hacker. Hacker averages about 3.7 yards a carry, and he's had a couple of touchdown runs this year. Calvin English on the stop. Hacker is a 5'9 sophomore from Pine Hill, Alabama. Gets two on that play. This, this is one of these areas where they normally involve their tight end and their uh, Chris Long. Wouldn't be surprised to see him making a play down here inside the red zone. Steal all by himself to the near side of the field. The give is to Packer, and he has run down again. Jesse, not only the great pursuit, but how many black jerseys around the ball Four. carrier that time? Four. They are just flying to the football of Aristotle with the great stop, and that is probably going to be the last play of this first quarter. Take a look at it again. Look at the pursuit. Mm. Two, three, four black jerseys around the ball carrier, and that will put an end to our first quarter of play. A lot of action right now. North Alabama trying to make Valdosta State pay for a costly third down penalty that kept this drive alive. But their work is not finished yet. When we pick it up in the second quarter, it'll be third down and 11 for the visitors as they try and overcome an early 10-0 deficit here in the Gulf South Conference Game of the Week in Valdosta, Georgia. saw from those clips some hard hitting action in the first quarter but the better, better of the play went to Valdosta they have jumped out to a 10-0 lead North Alabama trying to answer here on a third and 11. It's a little different formation for North Alabama there they had two tight ends two flankers and one running back that's the first time they had shown that but now they're going to kick a field goal. Sailor threw it up in the air for Steele to try and go get but he was not able to do it nicely defended by number nine, Wayman Ford, the junior cornerback who was right on Steele, and it brings up a fourth down and a field goal opportunity. And Wayman Ford's a good cover corner. He's had three interceptions this year. One of them he returned for a touchdown. Utah Fakuda in to try the field goal from about the 19-yard line. First, first time you get to call his name. He, has a good one. he was a special teams player of the week earlier. He gets that one away. And that one, I can say with some confidence, was right down the middle. And they're on the board. So, Jesse, you got to, I would imagine, as an ex-coach, look at that and say, we can't let them get a third down penalty that gives us a first down and not get something out of that. And so even if it's just a field goal, they got to feel like they mission accomplished there. At least they got on the board. Well, the things we said real early in the game, it, it really looked like that there was, we'd call it butterfingers, we'd call it nerves, we'd call it uh, uptight. But uh, no question, North Alabama was not at their best on the first couple of possessions. Valdosta made a mistake also, but, I, but boy, they, they really are playing super defense and causing things to happen. And uh, great kickoff coverage also that's given some problems. Anyway, I, I just think it, we got a game here. It's going, <laughs> it'll probably be decided right at the end. Certainly that is one of the interesting stories. Utah Fukuda is from Japan, one of a number, over 100. Japanese students who study at UNA and uh, never played football, of course, in his 
native country, but came to the campus, was a soccer player in Japan, and fell in love with the game, literally went and bought himself a football, just started kicking, caught the attention of the coaches, and has played himself not only on the team, but as we said earlier in the year, a special teams player of the week, and he will kick it off right now. Back deep for Valdosta. Number 10, Sherard Reynolds. We'll see if the Lions can cover as well as Valdosta has. They've done a great job on kick coverage so far. This is a high short one. And it's fumbled. For, oh, my word. What a hit that was. Wow. Number 42 for North Alabama. Brian McNair. Pick whatever cliche you want to. Cage Rattler left a calling card. Whatever he did, he made an impression and stopped that one in its tracks. Almost a fumbled situation there on that high short kick, but pretty good coverage. Take a look at it again. They yeah. threw a flag here. We had an earlier procedure on the kicking team, but I called it a decleater the other night. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's the one. I was trying to remember the term you used. A decleater. That's what it was. He left all those cleats out on the field. Willie up. Milton said, now we got to do it again. I think I'm going to fair catch that one next time. Did you hear that explanation, Jesse? No, I did not. Unfortunately, not able to hear it. I give. It gave an illegal procedure penalty, so it looks like evidently they jumped off sides. He said something about four players was the tail end. Oh, yeah. I okay, I got you. Hey, you you got to have at least four players uh, on each side of the ball. They probably only had three on one side. Okay, there you go. That explains it. So Thomas Graham with the explanation. Jesse Branch with the interpretation, and we'll do it again, this time from the 30. That is, Fukuda seems to be a, a pretty accurate kicker. In fact, he's been a, a pretty good so far this year, 10 of uh, 16. But of his six misses, three have been outside 50 yards. I'm not quite sure he's got as much explosiveness in his leg as his counterpart, Michael Green, and that could be a factor. They backed him up five more yards here. You saw that kick was a high, short one. There is Fukuda on the sideline, so... I believe they're going to have number 39 is going to kick it off right now. Bo Tanner, he is also... He actually started the year as the starting kicker, and I think they believe he's got a little bit more TNT in that leg. Maybe not quite as accurate as Fukuda, but he will... Obviously now from their own 30, he's got to try and get a little leg into this one. So let's see how far he can get it going. It'll come down at about the 20. He's going to get some good field position. A nice job picking his way. Cedric Haywood, the junior from Warner Robins, Georgia, does a nice job weaving his way through the traffic to get the ball up to about the 38-yard line. Good field position. For Barrett Wilkes. Well, it certainly is. I mean, you get the ball up to almost the 40 yard line to start. See what kind of an answer the Lions have defensively. Their first series, they were very impressive defensively. They've been on their heels a little bit. A nice delay, a lot of room for Brown. Turns it into a good gain out close to the 45. It's going to be a pickup of about close to six, I would say. So let's call it second and four. But, you, you know, just the one thing you think about, if you're all fired up early, it usually translates on the defensive side of the football, right. at least, doesn't it? You see guys flying around, and that's what certainly North Alabama's got to translate that energy to the, the, the defensive side. They certainly do. And, of course, I... And there's been some awfully hard hitting on both sides of the ball, and, and uh, it'd be interesting to see. This is a very ever ever series is so critical in a game like this. Uh, just don't make any big mistakes, and don't give up the big play. That's it. Looks, looks, throws, and let's see. Do they say he caught it? Oh, wow, that was a uh, Jesse. You've been you coached a long time. What was that signal? It was. I think so. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, I got to get the official's handbook out for undecided. He looked like he signaled catch, and then he signaled no catch. I was wisely going to wait for the signal before I reported it, and he didn't make a clear one there. Whoa. It's really hard. Right? That's a pretty athletic play for Valdosta's number 81, Diedrich Smith. 
freshman from Hawkinsville, Georgia, but they rule it no catch. That was a great effort, though. So it'll bring up a third and five. Brooks under pressure now. And not going to get anywhere near the first down. Gets it out to about the 46. Boy, it was good pressure. They, four people rushing, and they got back there and made him pull it down. Of course, great coverage in the second there. Left nobody open. Fourth and three. Good job, as you said, Jess, in the secondary, making sure there was nowhere to throw it. And they keep him short of the first down, and it will bring up a punting situation for Travis Tidwell. Tidwell averages about 38 yards a kick. It's a good one away here. Not only good distance, but most importantly with that guy back there, great hang time, forcing a fair catch out of number 21, Anthony Merritt. And that is the best way to defend his ability to run back punts, not let him run it back at all, force the fair catch. And so North Alabama will... Very significant stop, I think, by the Lions that time. As Valdosta was starting to get some offensive momentum, but they force a punt. They'll take over on their own 16, trying to cut further into this lead. They trailed at one point 10 nothing. did North Alabama, got a field goal on their last possession, and now try and build on that, although, again, starting deep in their own territory. They have really not had at all the battle of the field position when it comes to where they have taken over. Valdosta's taken over in much better spots than the Lions have. Straight ahead to Blunt. A little misdirection there. The fake to the fountain going one way and then give to the Blunt the other. And, uh, you know, trying to, they got it. They want to get their running game going, obviously. That, you know, take some pressure off that quarterback. The thing I'm still impressed with, they've only given up six sacks in the entire season and a quarterback that's leading the lead can pass off it. They have had a dominant advantage running the football. They rush for 142 yards a game, give up just 71 yards on the ground. So you, that underscores how important that has been to their success so far this year. It's 83 long going in motion. Long actually tries to serve as a blocker on that play, and there's a mass of bodies that go out of bounds. Fountain takes the ball and knocked out of bounds at about the 20. Pick up of about two. They brought big Chip Long, the tight end, across in motion over there to take care of the corner uh, who was up there defending a quick screen. And, of course, obviously at 6'3", uh, or 6'2", 222 pounds, a little bit better than one of those 165-pound wide ups. Three receivers to the left of Vinny Saylor on a third and six from the 20. Steele, Long, and Merritt. Pressure gets away, tried to force it again, and an interception. Tried to squeeze it between defenders, and Everett Kitchens comes up with the second interception of the night for Valdosta's defense. This from a guy who has been very accurate all season long. Saylor had only thrown four interceptions coming into the game. That's two tonight. You know, the pressure, I think, led to that. They, they got back there to him and made him move. And they got him out of his rhythm, and then, of course, he throws it into over and under coverage. You see him looking to his right. There's four black shirts there. I've said that about ten times tonight. Every play, it seems like wherever the point of attack is, there's four black shirts. Tries to squeeze it in there to number 24, Messing, and it is picked off by Kitchens. First down now at the 30. Great opportunity for the Blazers. They're on Reynolds. Close. Nothing there. That great little, defense. Boy, they're doing a great job on those little quick screens. So we caught up oh, penalty. We got a little personality problem taking place. <laughs> well, you, you just made a great play defensively. If you're North Alabama, you can't negate it with some foolish extracurricular stuff. We'll see if that is what happens or not. It's one of those cases it probably should be a double foul again because it's just such an emotion going as I hit you, you hit me. I don't think it's going to be, though. They are, no, it's, they're, they're, getting, they're getting ready to walk it off against the Blazers here. The Blazers are backing up. That's too bad. They've had a couple of really critical penalties. They could have 
of him a bit and it's going to cost his team as you just heard from Thomas Graham backs them up that has been a bit of a boogaboo for this team they are penalized about 70 yards a game the opposition just 49 and we've seen a couple of costly ones already tonight on the Blazers that backs them up to the 46 for a second down and 26 now the 40 to the 37. That's one of Coach Hatcher's very favorite plays. He sends all four receivers deep. Uh, the wide outs is a four vert vertical stretch and they send the back underneath him in an open area and try to get it to him let him run. That's exactly what he did. And you picked better, up good yards. You better get some protection to do that though. Yep. I would think. Yeah, you he sure did it. have plenty of time. And certainly Brown did well after the catch to get it down to the 37. A gain of nine. Third down though still and 17. And we've already talked about the great ability Michael Green has at least it appeared in warm-ups to bang them from deep, but they still have to gain a little bit more even to push him to the back of his range here. Plenty of time underthrown that time. He actually had a man. And I know Sailor's not going to be, excuse me, Wilkes not going to be pleased with that delivery. Tended for number 82, Derek Tharp. So right now it would be a 54-yard attempt. They don't try it. No, they're not. Either. That would be a little bit of a stretch, I think, even for Green. Although I'm telling you, Jesse, in warm-ups, <laughs> if the game were on the line, I think he'd have a fighting shot at it, but they don't need to take that kind of a gamble here. They'll run out Tidwell to try and pin North Alabama. Of course, it's always dangerous when that guy's back there. You're taking a look at one of the great punt returners Boy, that was in this conference history, and he'll fair catch it. Will Merritt do just that. So, so far they have not been hurt by the return ability of Merritt. But a good job by the Lion defense not to let that interception come back and hurt them. That's twice they've been able to do that. I mean, you know, they've, <laughs> they, they've, uh, they've dodged some bullets in this first half. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep dodging them because they've given up some bad field position. If this were a low-scoring field position game, they would have been seemingly at a terrible disadvantage because every time they start, they're inside their 20, inside their 15. This time they're barely outside their 10 or on the 11. And again, they've thrown two interceptions so far. This has not been a problem for Vinny Saylor so far in the season. But tonight, good defense by Valdosta has caused two picks. Well, he had two people right on that head inside. They bracketed, they call it. They had a defender inside, a defender outside, and he had to put the ball right between them. And you, ooh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a high risk, low reward kind of play. He had to put it between the two defenders, and, and they just turned four. it into a pickup of four. But this is a tribute again, Valdosta's defense. They only have 11 out there, Jess. Let's count. It seems like <laughs> maybe they have more. They're well, everywhere. They are. They, they're doing a great job of mixing up their coverages. And they, they don't get too Kenny, but they, but they put so much pressure on him. I mean, they make him. Oh, a nice run by Merritt that time. That's one way to get it in his hands. Don't worry about throwing it to him. Just hand it to him. And he turns it into a good gain. Mark Hutzpah, the coach for North Alabama, animated on the sideline at one of the officials. You're taking a look at Chris Hatcher, his counterpart. But Hutzpah upset about something on that play. He wanted a call of some sort. But he's got to be pleased with the result. He gets a first down after the 25. These coaches are working these officials. <laughs> it's an, it's, it's like a, a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> it is, a, it is a, an emotional game. And there's a lot on the line with these two teams. Sailor drops. But again, two defenders right there. Boy, they're right there. Leggett and Ford, both there for Valdosta, and they really have done a terrific job defending. This is a team, for, for as effective as they've been, Valdosta, and they only give up 14 and a half points a game, which is second in the conference. They have given up over 250 yards a game passing, though, so they have been teams able to move the ball on them, but tonight they are doing a pretty good job in that passing defense. They sure are, they, and, and it comes from the fact those four people up front are putting tremendous pressure, I think, and it, it's forcing him to throw the ball off rhythm, which means it, it's hard to get it exactly where a receiver can catch it. 
little shovel pass that time to Blunt. But again, well defended. Keep it to a, a on modest game. Stop for Valdosta. Number 89, Dustin DeHaven, 6'1 junior. Boy, if he's 80%, Jess, he must be something special at 100 because that was a pretty good change of direction right there. Sec a third down and seven. They kept that to just a three yard gain. There's Reggie Hubbard down at the bottom of your screen. We got pressure left. Coming. Oh, that's a beautifully thrown ball, though. Beautifully thrown ball to Fountain. Again, pretty good coverage. Number 91, Tim Thompson back in there. Number 32, Antoine Harris. But give Saylor credit. He put it right on the money, and it's going to move the chains for his team. Watch it again, Jess. This is a nicely thrown ball. Yeah, you got to give him credit for that. That was an excellent thrown ball. Right on the money. Put it right where it's Look at the coverage. They are just defending very, very well. This is fun to watch, even though you're an old running coach. <laughs> At least you're open-minded, Jess. <laughs> a little delay, and there's Blunt. He's got some room. It'll be a nice gain. Pick up a five to the 45. They have a flag, though. Illegal motion. We'll back up the Lions. Gates that five yard gain will make it first and 15. That's, that's really too bad because I think the guy that actually was moving forward had nothing to do with the play. You know, he was in motion going toward the line of scrimmage. Negates a pretty good gain. Yeah, making second and five would be uh, a lot better than what they've faced on a number of their drives. <laughs> yeah, first think, and 15. Now they go back to first and 15 here. Pretty good job defensively because he did have a lot of blockers in front, but they had great pursuit, especially Scott Foss, one of the defensive captains. Tim Thompson in there as well. Sean Harris, also number 19. So lots of black jerseys moving to the football. Once again, there was a whole host of Blazers out there to welcome him <laughs> to the sidelines of a <laughs> where you got protection. Second and 12, he did get three. motion and now with the football. Boy, little guy's quick now. See, he could go the distance at any time. That's the thing that he and, that he and Merritt give him such of a punch, you know, to defend these guys all over the field. Found did a nice job there after he got hit. Little as he is, carrying a pile forward a little bit. He's a tough little 5'9 freshman from Winter Haven. Got that ball out to the 45 and makes, a, makes it a third and five. Big play right here. You got the blitz coming. Quick throw, juggled a bit, but could we get a signal here? We're waiting. I think they call we got it a catch. One. They do. We got one. We got one from Chip Long, but he doesn't count. <laughs> He's the guy that was the receiver. He said I caught it, and the officials agree with him. So now it is going to be very close. Jess, I'm going to play official here. Watch this again. He juggles it. Of course, there's no time after that because they are on top of him right away. Kevin Atkins, as they have all night long, been right on top of the receivers. But that's going to be a first down. I don't know why they're going to even measure. Well, I'll tell you what. The Valdosta the coaches over, they, they were making a call. <laughs> it was incomplete to them. But it did look like a great catch. Now, Jesse, I'm playing you this week. I am sitting right even with that first down marker, and that ball is a first down. I will bet my modest paycheck that he made it. Let's see. Well, there could be a knot in that chain, you know. Or... Yes, I mean, I, if you're wondering where we're seated, it is right even with that first down marker and now the line of scrimmage because that is a first down. And that was a very big play, I'm going to add, because uh, they got a little drive going here for the first time in a while, moving that ball started, again. Started back inside their 15. Now they've punched it. 
by a half a football into Valdosta territory. Take a look at Mark Hudspeth. He's 8-3, by the way, against nationally ranked teams. So they have played some good quality football teams and have had more than their share of success. Give us to Merritt, and he's able to turn the corner a little bit. He'll get a good gain out of it inside the 45. And, you know, that's very important here, I think. Uh, one of the things they're doing is they're making the Valdosta defense run sideline to sideline, which is going to exhaust them a little bit, hopefully and take down some of that pass rush pressure. And those are the kind of things that can wear on you in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he was under pressure, Vinny Saylor, who you look at right there early in the game. They were getting to him. He's thrown two interceptions. He was constantly under pressure, but he has responded well, orchestrated a good drive right here. Six-yard gain there, second and four. Now he's got some time. He's looking for a big chunk of yardage down the right sideline and a terrific catch by number 24, Jason Messing. Number 19, Sean Harris, back in coverage. Looked like he was right on it, but that has been Messing's forte. Look at that average gain per catch, 17 yards per reception. And that was a big gain from the 44 down now to the six, a 38-yard pickup on that one from Vinny Saylor, and they are knocking on the door trying to get this game tied. Boy, he threw that ball up and put it the only place you could put it for the receiver to get it. And of course, John Harris is only 5'8", 158 pounds. Uh, you know, you kind of mismatch in size there. Messing 6'1", 200. Timed his leap, turned it into a big game. First and goal. Direct snap from the tailback, that's pretty good. Direct snap to Blunt, but again, quick to the football and a gaggle of tacklers in there, including number 89, Dustin DeHaven. Back to the single wing days. Good gracious. <laughs> Only a few of us remember that. <laughs> Put the quarterback out as a blocker and snap the ball to the tailback. Got them a couple of yards. Now they got Sailor back under center on second and goal from the four. Oh, and he had a man. He had number 35 wide open right there. He had Gregory Clark and just underthrew him. And I know Saylor can't be happy there. They bit on the fake to Blunt. Not able to put it on target, and it's third and goal. They've been so effective in this red zone uh, scoring touchdowns. That, but, of course, they're going against Valdos. They're going against one of the best defenses in the Division II football right here. to Blunt, not going to get much. Well, he got hit, too. Number 52, Michael Cullen in on the stop, and I believe they will run Utah Fakuda back out there and try and make sure at least they don't come up empty on this possession. A pretty good defensive stand on first and goal from the sixth by the Blazer defense. Fakuda, as you see there, one for one, 29 yards earlier. Pretty accurate kicker, not all that uh, effective from long range, but this is a chip shot for him, and he puts it right through to make it 10-6. That's a good drive. That was a, a very well executed, time-consuming drive. A long drive, starting inside their 15, culminates in a field goal, but the Valdosta defense got stingy when it mattered most. I don't think you're going to be able to run much. A happy Utah Fakuda says it's too close, but too close when you put two field goals on the board, two for two in that department. Very impressive drive, Jess. 86 yards, 14 plays. Of course, they would have liked to have made that 90 yards. Could have got him in the end zone, but well, I guess the, the defense they're going against. I mean, they got to take what they get. I mean, when they if they can get any points, they got to take them. Absolutely, these teams for as ex as explosive as they have been offensively. Very stingy defensively. 37 points a game for North Alabama, 30 for Valdosta, but neither of these teams even gives up 15 points a game. Valdosta just 14.5. That's second in the conference, but the team they're second to is North Alabama at 13.4. Once again, Bo Tanner is going to do the kicking off responsibilities. They feel he can take it a little bit deeper down the field than Fakuda does. Let's we'll see what he does with this one. Another pop-up shot. Fair catch called. Oh. That's 
that's a good decision there by number 25 for the uh, Blazers, Willie Milton. And they'll get decent field position here. Jess almost jumped out of his seat <laughs> on that. I thought he was going to blow him up, but even though he had a fair catch signal go. You know, we got to say something about Valdosta's red zone defense. Uh, they Only 57% of the time that people even be put any points on the board against them. So obviously... Uh, it's the immovable, irremovable object against the irremovable uh, defense out there. They can't, they can't move it in on them. Yeah, they have. They st they definitely got it done on first and goal and stiffened when they needed to and kept them out of the end zone, which preserves that lead. If you're just joining us, Valdosta had a 10 nothing lead in this one. UNA's come back with a pair of Utah Fukuda field goals and cut it to 10-6. And to give that time is to Vincent Brown. Both these teams have really responded defensively though there have been no easy yards in this one number 44 Dusty Shack in on the stop there it's going to be a loss of a yard actually now they are spotting it as a gain of a yard the scoreboard has it as second and 11 but I think it's a gain of a yard so we'll call it second and nine we need to mention about Austin's offensive line has been pretty decimated by injury this year they really they're pretty thin and Will Shelton an outstanding player uh, injured out I think we understand for the season and so they're really limited in numbers and uh, that could be a factor before this evening's over well it's it's a relatively warm night it's getting a little cooler now a nice night but they are thin that may be a, as you said uh, an element we have to discuss later in the game nicely thrown ball to Jeffrey Felton number 29 on the stop for North Alabama Edwan Williamson 511 junior linebacker it's going to be pick up to about the 35 which will bring up a uh, third down and four Barrett Wilkes he's got one touchdown pass already on the evening oh they're coming with pressure Oh, and oh, a delay, man. and that is very lucky that was not a fumble there. Whether that was a good read or just sheer numbers, but they turned it into a big loss. That was number 14, Vincent Brown, who barely was able to take the handoff. Watch it again, Jess. Oh, yeah. Oh, two defenders right there, including number 93, Kent Terrell Tanner. They had the full blitz on them, and now then they got an opportunity to possibly run a punt back because they've got the field position. This but I tell you what, Valdosta has done a great job on Anthony Merritt. I mean, super job. Well, on kickoffs they have. Well, he's not going to get to run this one back either. Does. Now each team has one off the side of the foot job. And Mark Hutzman is, Mark Hutzman is telling the referees, keep walking, keep walking, keep going, keep going. He's, saying. <laughs> he's negotiating with the officials, and when they're done with that discussion, we'll figure out where they spot the football. Good field position for the Lions. It's a good one, and we expected nothing less between the number 14 UNA Lions and number 3 Valdosta State Blazers. 10-6, the home team in front. Let's take a look at the North Alabama possessions. Started the game not only with the interception, but then a shanked punt. But the, the last couple of possessions, look at those two drives, 70 yards and 86 yards. Those are the ones that leap at you. The other ones, obviously, were three and outs. But when they haven't gone three and out, just they get one, one first down, and all of a sudden they get a gaggle of them. Yeah. And, that's why, you know, it's just one of those things that uh, both of these teams, it's just too bad one of them are going to have to lose tonight, and that, that really is too bad. But uh, what a great night for football and great football fans. This is super. Well, they have great field position here, something they haven't had too much tonight. Inside the 45 and plenty of time. Boy, did he have all day for Vinny Saylor, and he's got a man. Beautifully thrown ball and taken by number 83 deep inside the five-yard line. That is Chip Long. Boy, that was I, the first time all night Vinny Saylor had enough time to have a ham sandwich back there, <laughs> Jess. You're exactly right on that one. I mean, they, uh, he had all kinds of time. I'd like to see that one more time. I think he did only send out three receivers. I think he kept in maximum protection, which obviously helped. But Chip Long caught it right in stride and wisely to be safe went down to the turf to cradle that one in and takes it to a first and goal at the two Blunt and they are just inside their five yard line have been absolutely faultless tonight Tim Thompson right on the ball carrier I'm telling you now 
I don't believe they're going to be able to make anything go inside. This team is tough against the inside running game. They're going to talk about it. Well, they need to talk about it because how many opportunities like this can you squander against a team that averages 30 points a game in their own right in their own stadium? Mm -hmm. You've got to punch it in when you have this opportunity. They didn't score in a first and goal last possession from the six, and certainly Valdosta doesn't look like they're going to back down on this possession either. Well, as like I mentioned, though, uh, Valdosta is really, really a tough team inside that red zone. I mean, uh, 13 out of 23 is all it's, it's, it's even scores, 57% of the time, and that's unbelievable. That is one of the uh, really telltale stats of these two teams. Well, Valdosta has been able to put this gaudy record up with some surprising stats. If you take a look at their total offense, they average 399 yards a game and give up 369. Not a huge disparity there. They actually get out rushed a game. They average 112, give up 116. The turnovers going into tonight were dead even. Last week, they made four turnovers, but they still won the game because they forced five, and we're seeing that a little bit tonight. A bad punt. They are backed up inside their own goal line, but they are not going to make it easy to punch this in. They've already stopped one first and goal inside the 10. They're going to try and do it again and make them have to think about kicking another field goal. Obviously, a lot to do. That's only second down, but, boy, they have been tough in the red zone. Here they have. They've overloaded the line. It's an unbalanced line right. Oh, the quarterback's going left. Try to trickery. A little bit of a kind of a bootleg, they really. I think it's a fumble. This could be a fumble. It depends on the call, but I'm telling you what, Valdosta's got the ball under their arm. Sailor, watch. He fakes the blunt, as you said. They had the unbalanced line right. He is out there naked. Oh. There is no blocking whatsoever. He put his hand up to try and signal that he was in, but he's not close to being in. But I don't think it's going to be a fumble. No, it wasn't a fumble. He was down. Uh, the ground can't cause a fumble. But, but they didn't get... They tried to trick him. To the time. end zone. He did get it down inside the one, though. Oh, they got the big boys in there now. Look at this. This is Woody Hayes to be proud of this. Well, this is just smash mouth stuff here. Blood straight ahead, and we're waiting for a signal. He's not in. I don't believe he's made it. All right, Coach, what do you do now? This is the second time you've had first and goal. Those linemen are saying, let's go. <laughs> well, do you send the kicker out again? I don't think so. I think they're going to. This is on the road. You're playing for the marbles. Uh, they're probably going to go for it. I, I, well, they have tried a bit of trickery. I think they're going to call a timeout, I think. They're going to let the clock run down, I guess. And then call a timeout. I saw Mark Hutchinson is telling his quarterback, Vinny Sale, I'm going to take a timeout, and they will. But this is an enormous possession here. You, the football is a little bit more than a football length out. Maybe we'll call it a half a yard, but the fact of the matter is just there's really not a whole lot to indicate that if they just play smash mouth football they would even be able to bust this that short a distance because this defense has been tremendous inside their 10-yard line. They're really getting off the snap well. I mean, they're, they're getting penetration there, pads below pads, and they're, and they're making it just virtually impossible for them to go forward in the running game and their linebackers are doing a great job too they're coming in there and filling the filling the gate the holes and but when you're underneath pads and causing uh, where there's absolutely no movement it's hard to get in the end zone but this is one of those things where if you say, hey you've got to get it in the end zone find a way to get it in the end zone if you're on the offense so we'll see what happens let's go down real quick with uh, jim caval jim Bob, talking a little bit about the Valdosta defense and how strong the front has been here in the goal line stance they're making. One of their leaders is junior outside linebacker and leader, leading tackler Jason McNeil. He's been a fan favorite because of his big hits, but before coming to Valdosta State from Mesabe Ridge Junior College, McNeil had never played linebacker at any level. He was a safety. The coaching staff had to get him in for his big play abilities, and they did that. He's been a menace this season with 46 tackles, 30 solo, three sacks, a pick, two forced fumbles, and a safety. This kid can make plays. He's one guy to watch out for right now. He's number 35 for the Blazers. Bob? And they punch it in. They went for it. You saw Utah Fakuda waiting to see if he was going to get the call to kick another field goal, but he did not. They rolled the dice, and with about a minute and a half to go before halftime, they finally punch it in, as Jesse said. At some point, you got to decide we're just not going to be denied, and they weren't. Vinny Saylor 
takes it straight ahead for another rushing touchdown. Saylor has not only thrown for 16, but he was able to sneak that one across and put his team in front. The point after by Fakuda puts them on top. That was an impressive goal line stand by Valdosta. It's also very impressive by North Alabama. They put those two big linemen in the backfield, and I mean, they were going to get movement up front, as I've mentioned before. It was a, the, the jumbo package. They had all the big boys out there. They tried that once before, though, with Blunt, weren't able to punch it in, but this time, with le less than a yard to go, they were able to knock it into the end zone and put them in front. The Lions take a 13 to 10 lead. So certainly a uh, a big momentum swing mm -hmm. as we've seen in the past. We saw in last year's game North Alabama was leading in that one 13-3 and wound up losing it by the score of 24 to 20 in a touchdown with less than a minute to go. We took a look at the scoring drive right there and this game has had an equally impressive momentum swing. 10-0, Valdosta was on top, but the UNA fans are happy because their squad has 13 unanswered trying to figure out how to get to the locker room with that lead intact as they let Bo Tanner tee it up and get ready to kick it off. So impressed with these two young head coaches. I'm just, uh, they both of them are in control of the game. They do, they do their job so well. It's so impressive to watch them and what they're doing. Tanner, they again go to the high short kick time they'll try and run it back but they're not getting much out of that number 25 Willie Milton takes the uh, kick and does not get very much on the return but they'll have decent field position out at about the 30 yard line take a look at the Valdosta State possessions see the first one was a punt nine yards in the wrong direction the most impressive that third drive 77 plays 60 yards for the touchdown but Four punts in six possessions, so you certainly got to tip your hat to the Lion defense as well. Well, they've, they've uh, started playing. Have, they've, they've obviously turned their whole system around here. <laughs> Three out of how many drives? What is it? Four drives? They had minus yards? Oh, my. <laughs> that is a, a quick reception by number 28, Travis Taylor, and he turns it into a first down. First down. Hey, this, this is like I got five minutes left with a minute and 20 seconds <laughs> with these teams. Uh, that's an eternity. They got plenty of time, as you say. Quick to the line of scrimmage without a huddle. Plenty of time for plenty of plays here as they have it at their 43. Quick to the other side. Not much there. Number 82, Derek Tharp with the reception. Brought down for almost no gain. In fact, they will be. They'll call it no gain. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Good play by Donald Tharps out there playing a quick screen. I look forward to go downfield here with only 45 seconds. Well, they've got to start trying to take some shots because time is getting short here, although it'll be interesting if they get Green out there for a field goal with the big leg that he's had. On the run, pressured, but puts it right on the money with a nice throw by Boy. Wilkes to number 82, Tharp. Well, he did well. Stepped up in the pocket and then had to actually run to avoid the pressure and still able to make an accurate throw inside the 40. The clock stops as they move the chains to 39, and they are almost in field goal range right now for Green. We got pressure. Screen, screen back. Brown has some blocking, and it's going to be a big game. He's down to the 25, well designed and well executed. Now they are clearly in field goal range for Green. It would only be a 42-yarder from right now. But with this momentum, I don't even think they're thinking field goal. They still really? have two timeouts left. They're going to take some shots at the end zone, I'm fairly certain. They, uh, yeah, they have two timeouts left. So they, they took one here with 17 seconds left on the clock. Like I said, it's an eternity. Looking at that guy who knows a little bit about putting good drives together, the 19... 94 Harlan Hill Trophy winner Chris Hatcher, 66 and 8 in his tenure here. That's only 89 percent. Highest percentage <laughs> in the country. For more information about football or any of the other outstanding sports in the conference, log on to www.gulfsouthconference.org. 89 percent 
of the uh, of winning percentage for Chris Hatcher, as we said, is not only the highest percentage in Division Two, but highest in Division One or Two in the entire country. And you can see why. This is a well-coached team, but certainly that guy you're looking at right there, Mark Hutzpah, takes a back seat to no one. He has had a great run as well, 28 and 14, a 13 and 1 record two years ago as the National Coach of the Year. Both those guys, great players in the uh, Gulf South Conference. You know, excellent players. That's just great career. A 92 graduate of Delta State, a defensive back and a quarterback. Hatcher, a quarterback. See what the timeout brought for both these co coaches. Any tricks or what will they do on a first and 10 at the 25 with 17.3 on the clock? They're not going to give him long to throw, that's for sure. They brought a lot of people, and he's going to go down. Good coverage, too. They had That was a sack. That coverage was a coverage sack. sack. Yes, it was. 8.2, and now it gets dicey for Chris Hatcher. It would be a 44-yard field goal if they tried it right now. And if they take a shot at the end zone, they run the risk of running out of time and not getting a field goal attempt at all. So we'll see what the head coach has up his sleeve here. They do, they just called their last time out. If you're going to try the field goal, I would think it's got to be now, Jess, so you run the risk of not getting your team out on the field because in order to take a shot at the end zone, you're going to run that last eight seconds out probably. I would think so, but knowing Coach Hatcher, well, I've seen him do it uh, in these other games. I mean, he, he probably got a way to run three plays with eight points. No timeouts. <laughs> that would be coaching <laughs> clinic stuff. I'd like to see that. Michael Green is who you're looking at there. We watched him in warm-ups, and he was at this end of the field making field goals consistently over 50 yards. His first one was a 48-yarder, was not exactly right down the middle, but it had plenty of leg on it, and I think he'd have plenty of leg from where they are right now. I would think he'll decide to go in with a tie. That, I mean, that would be my evaluation here because, uh, you know, start the game over at halftime. Here he comes, and as we said, in at this end of the field, there's a brick wall that's a good 15 yards behind the uprights that in warm-ups, right from where he's standing right now, he was consistently hitting the top of that wall. So we don't put a freeze on him. He had, uh, he had plenty of leg. Well, putting a freeze on him, that is exactly what... Mark Hutzman's going to do. He'll take his last time out, and we'll see what Mr. Green has and up his, well, not up his sleeve, I guess, but more importantly, up his shoe to see if he can uh, tie this game. It's been, in a lot of ways, what we thought, Jess. It's been back and forth, very aggressive, very active defenses, but these teams are averaging a combined 67 points a game, and you got to tip your hat to the defensive coordinators and the players who've done a good job on that side of the football for both these teams. Have, having watched Coach Hatcher for the last five years, don't put it past him to make his field goal. <laughs> when 89% winning percentage gives you the liberty to try some things uh, and have people and say, he, hey, guy's a genius. But I'm telling you, he's got well, he's got to stop doing that because if he does not hit this well, I'm going to get emails from the Valdosta fans saying I jinxed Michael Green. But trust me, in warm-ups, he had plenty of leg from right where he is. We'll see. It's going to be from the 34... So it's going to be a long one. It's a 51-yarder. Oh, that's plenty of leg. My goodness, is that plenty of leg. Jesse, I told you, he did that like it was a walk in the park, a 44-yard field goal attempt. I said 51. I had the line wrong, but still with 44, he could have kicked it from 51 and had it very easily right through there to tie it up at 13. How significant was that oh, for Valdosta to answer? Can you imagine that, that when we said it, it was eternity when it started less than a minute and a half, and they take it, I mean, with no problem, take it down the field, put three on the board at, at the tie of the game. I, I started to say a while ago, probably, you know, it's, it looks to me like the way things are going, we'll probably be here a long, <laughs> long time because... Are you, are you thinking about the <laughs> oh, those two letters, OT? Last time we did a game together that you called for OT, we got OT. Mm -hmm. you, you, are you... Are you well, prognosticating again? Well, it's just not fair for one of these teams. I'm telling you, to have to lose tonight, and it, it, uh, it's it's going to be tough to, for one of them to, to, to give in. Well, I'll tell you what's... I don't know if it's unfair or it just underscores how difficult it is. There are four conferences in this region, in Division Two that will send six teams to the national playoffs. Right. Six. And right now, as terrific as North Alabama's been, they in the region are not ranked in the top six. So they are one of the top 15 teams in the country that right now still are not in a position where they could say for certain they would be in the national championship playoffs. So this is an enormous game for them. And frankly, Valdosta knows in this league 
There are no off weeks, so if you get a second loss with still a lot of football to go, the defending national champions would not be guaranteed of having a chance to defend their title as well. So this is an enormous game for both these teams. It really is. And it's a, you know, it's it's one of those things that you know, there's there's four different conferences in this region, and, and uh, you're really not even guaranteed of a champion going to the to the uh, playoffs. So it's they just got to play and win. And then, like I said, it really is unfortunate that one of these teams is probably going to drop out of the rankings uh, in the region. You no, know, they did a nice job of keeping that guy in under wraps all half. As Anthony Merritt, they kind of ran a pop-up kick to him to make sure their coverage was there, and it was as it has been. All half, they run him out of bounds and put an end to what's been a very interesting and even first half. As reflected on the scoreboard, two teams with national championship aspirations are all tied at 13 in Valdosta on a beautiful night for football. And we are going to see if we can corral the head coach of the Blazers. And I believe... We're going to be able to do that in just a second as Chris Hatcher's made his way to our sideline reporter. Let's check in with Jim Cavall. Thanks, Bob. Coach Hatcher, what a half. Everything we expected to be in more great football. Talk about what you're going to tell your team in the locker room to try to get the lead and keep it in the second half. We got to quit um, making dumb penalties. I mean, we had four personal fouls there in the first half, and that's very uncharacteristic of us. Um, we didn't hunt the ball particularly well. Um, and then offensively, we're just not converting on third down, and we got to go out there and play our kind of football. We won a lot of games by being a smart football team. In the first half, we wasn't very smart. So hopefully we can get that changed around and we can come out and play a little bit better in the second half. Talk about smart football, Coach. Do you think the magnitude of this game in the conference and the regional picture as well as being on TV has made a little bit of an impact in that respect? There's been some drop balls on punt returns. Both sides seem nervous at the beginning of the game. Well, I don't know if that has a lot to do with it. I mean, both teams are pretty good football teams. Um, it's a tremendous atmosphere. Um, it may have a little bit, but um, we got to do what we, we've been doing all season that got us to this point, and that's playing good, solid football. In the first half, we didn't do that. Defensively, um, we've been playing pretty good. That's what's keeping us in the ball game right now. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Hey, thank you. Bob? Well, that is exactly right, and he would certainly know a guy who's won 89% of his games. His defense has risen to the challenge against the highest-scoring team in the conference, North Alabama averaging 37 points a game, couple of impressive goal line stands, and we've got ourselves a tie at the intermission. 13 all in Valdosta. Great halftime festivities coming up, and we're back with more here on the Gulf South Conference. Game of the week. At the intermission, we are tied at 13 and a good one between two teams in the national rankings looking to get to that NCAA tournament and maybe, in Valdosta's case, defend their national championship with Jesse Branch, Bob Valvano. And Jess, the first half you heard Coach Hatcher say as he went to the locker room, boy, those penalties just been killing us. That's not the whole story, but how significant were those three 15-yard penalties on that's team? a big. That was a very big part of it, obviously, the three big 15-yard penalties. And then also the other big part of it was North Alabama throwing two interceptions that really hurt them. So there's two, both sides of the story, and I think that's the reason we're tied 13 all. And yeah, North Alabama had only thrown four all, all year. They throw two tonight. Let's took a, take a look at some of the first half highlights as it was a very good defensive performance with some outstanding offensive plays. The scoring started by Michael Green, a 48-yard field goal. Valdosta put some terrific defense early, some hard hitting. Vinny Saylor was really taking a pounding and under pressure early. Watch him get drilled again here. That led to a 10-0 lead for the home team on this beautiful pass from Wilkes. Puts it right on the money to Clay Calloway, and that makes it a 10-0 game. Utah Fakuda, though, the place kicker for North Alabama, would be good on back-to-back -back field goals. There they are to make the score 10-6. And then a very good reception here to take the ball down inside the five-yard line as uh, Long with a great catch there led to the quarterback sneak of Saylor. Right before the half, this is the one that tied it up. Michael Green, a 44-yard field goal, and we are tied. Just take a look at the stats. What jumps out at you there? Well, what jumps out, as I said, was the, it really the amount of time that North Alabama's had the ball and the number of yards that they've got, and yet the score's tied. But the two interceptions, really, the two turnovers, really did uh, uh, 
and make a big difference and give uh, Valdosta a chance to come back and tie the game at the end. Are there any adjustments that you would think jump out at you that would have to be made by either of these teams in the halftime locker room? Well, I don't know what it'd be. They, they, they both look awfully well coached, awfully well prepared. It's just a matter of one team holding on to the ball and the other one playing smart and not getting through the penalties. Just what you think it should be between two teams that are tied for first place in this conference, a closely fought, very, very intense game, lots of hard hitting, and the second half promises to be a good one as well. We'll have that kickoff as soon as we come back. It is tied at 13, two top 15 teams battling it out on the Gulf South Conference Game of the Week. That guy showed some guts right there. Number 17 for North Alabama. Their quarterback, Vinny Saylor, he took some hard shots early, but able to bounce back from that. Score on the quarterback sneak that tied the game up, or at least gave his team momentarily the lead before the field goal right before the half tied it up. And that is where we are, 13-13 at the intermission. Let's check in with Jim Caval and Coach Mark Hudspeth. Coach Hudspeth here down on the sideline. You're coming out of halftime. Tie game, done a great job. You took the lead, and then gave it back and now it's tied at the half. What would you tell your team in the locker room to prepare for the second half to get the lead and win this game? Well, we just need to get some turnovers defensively and offensively take care of the ball. You know, our defense did a great job overcoming two turnovers, backed up uh, the whole first half, and we finally got some uh, big plays offensively and uh, retook the lead, and uh, our guys are battling right now. We're ready to go for the second half. Talk about the magnitude of this game in the conference, in the region, and nationally, and how much it means to come out in the second half and win this ball game. Well, it's a big game. Every game this time of year is big. And so, obviously, uh, we can control our own destiny, but we're not worried about that right now. We're just worried about trying to play well here in the second half, see what happens. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bob? Yeah, you really can't. Uh, thank you, Jim. You really can't, Jesse, get too caught up in the big picture thing, can you? I mean, you got a two terrific football teams. Any one play can decide it. You really got to get the guys in the moment, don't you? You got to do it. Every play is important. You can't worry about what happened on the last play. You can't worry about what happened in the first half. The only thing you can control is the next play, and I'm sure that's what both these coaches told them as they come out here at halftime. But, boy, was that guy intense. No, he, you, he, I thought he was going to tackle Jim. You're right. Mark Hutsmith, we have seen both of these coaches who are absolutely got their game faces on. Let's take a little bit more of an in-depth look at some of the stats in the first half. You mentioned UNA with a big time of advantage, time of possession advantage, almost 18 and a half minutes to just 11 for Valdosta. Valdosta got those three big penalties for 45 yards, but UNA did throw those two interceptions. And, you know, I thought it was interesting that Mark Hutsmith said, we got to create a turnover. It may come down to... What, making the a timely turnover that gives you a short field to play on and get you that score that uh, decides this football game. Well, you know, really what we looked at uh, early on, the, the, uh, Valdosta only had the one drive in the first quarter, and then they had the one just before half. Other than that, That's true. Uh, uh, North uh, Alabama played great defense, yes. and then North Alabama has really been moving the football, except for the turnovers. Uh, they have moved the football uh, pretty consistently and had two real long drives. So uh, it's a very close game. <laughs> it's anybody's game, and we'll see. Well, a couple of things that also jump out at you. These teams have defended the guys that they've needed to defend. For example, Demarcus Blunt has 12 carries for just 25 yards. His long carry is just 8 yards. So they have done a very good job of containing him. And his counterpart, Vincent Brown, who's the leading rusher for Valdosta, just six carries for 11 yards. So those two guys haven't been able to get much going on the ground, while uh, Barrett Wilkes has been accurate 13 of 17, 13 completions for just 115 yards. So they've done a pretty good job of containing the big play there. And we talked about what a great job Valdosta's done of containing merit on kick returns really hasn't had much to show for it. He hasn't run a punt back at all yet. And four kick returns for just 44 yards, a long of 17. That is well below his average, so they've done a great job right. there. They did what they had to do. Eh? They took care of business. And, of course, uh, the big man is Chip Long, the tight end, you know, for North Alabama. Five big catches for 89 yards and took the one down to the one-yard line. He still took him four downs to get it in, but yep. here we go. That was the big play. We start the second half. Uh, another popped-up kickoff. Taken by number seven for Valdosta. He's got some room to work, does Cedric Haywood. That has been fairly effective for them. They've run that, that pop-up kick that's been covered. It was mishandled a couple of times. You take a look at Wilkes' numbers for the first half. But, boy, this really gives them very, very good field position. And you mentioned at the top, Jess, that's something Valdosta's taking great pride in, their kick coverage and the overall scheme of things. That gives them a little bit of an advantage here. They have pinned 
North Alabama much further back after kickoff. Yes, when you can when you can take the guy's best punch, which is their kickoff return and punt return, and you can take it and say, hey, you ain't going, you're not going to hurt us with it, and actually make it be a negative part of their game, you got to be proud of your, your team, as, as, as I'm sure Coach Hatcher is. 13 of 17 were the numbers for Wilkes. We showed you that just a moment ago. He is very accurate. Came into the game completing 70% of his passes. And he'll go to the air on first down, wide open, number four. Orange gets it for a pickup of about eight. That was an excellent read by Wilkes. So they, they had a little twist not going on in front in the middle. Got a flag, though. What's well, an area of holding? And they are waving everyone back. Uh, Coach Hatcher ain't going to be happy with that. Well, especially since the first comment he made to Jim Cavall at halftime as he left the field was, our penalties are killing us. Now, some of those he was angry about personal foul penalties, losing your composure. We'll wait for the call. Here it is holding. Referee Thomas Graham with the call. Number 61 C.A. Sanders like to, called. I'd like to see a replay of that so we could verify it. That would be nice. I don't think they're going to wait for your input, Coach. I think they've already called it and backed them up. And that'll back them way up to oh, 35 and make it a first and 20. Boy, what penalties really have. You know, he's made the point, Coach Hatcher. It hadn't hurt him much this year, but they actually, per game, are getting penalized more than 20 yards than their opposition. So they have been called for some penalties. First and 20 now. They're going to get some of it back there. Boy, look at the gang tackling. Zach Parker with the catch. That was one of those throws that were right in between two defenders. They had him bracketed very well. But, but, but Wilkes was able to lace it right in between them. Got five of them back, but still brings up a second and 14. So they got a long way to go. And based on how fired up Mark Hudspeth was in the halftime interview, if his defense doesn't come out and fly around, I'll be shocked. He had me ready to go guard somebody and tackle somebody, I'll tell you that. I was ready to to go take one for the team, although certainly Chris Hatcher has done the same with his group. They came out fired up on the defensive side of the football. He commented on that Here comes all night. The Looking long, not going to be catchable by number 10, Sherrod Reynolds. Well covered, absolutely well covered with 27. Number 27, Blake Farris. He's a guy who was a preseason All-American in some of the magazines, and he is been very, very effective in pass coverage all year as he was right there. Third and 14 now. That was a well-devised coverage. He, he actually was faking a manned coverage, a tight coverage, and then he did what we call bail. He bailed out and took off deep, gave the quarterback a bad read, and of course he was deeper than the receiver the entire way. It's Reynolds, split wide to the left. Passes to the right, though, to Vincent Brown, and he's turned it into a big game. Boy, that just that play certainly started innocently enough, but it turned into a big gain, and it is inside the 40. Brown with a lot of yardage after the catch on a first down. Boy, that's what Wilkes, uh, they, uh, Wilkes does such a great job. Coach Hatcher does such a great job. They wanted to go downfield on the crossing route, but it was covered up, and they take it to the outlet and let him make something happen out there. And he made three guys miss tackles for that long run. Well, that's got to be a disappointing development for Mark Hudsmith because his team looked like they were going to get the ball back and now on their heels a little bit thanks to the great run by Brown. What a burst of speed he put on to beat the first defender, Tharp, and then he turned it into a big game. you got to give them credit. They take what they give you. They don't try to force something and, and make a, a, a foolish play downfield. They got the back sitting out there in the open, make him miss a tackle and turn a, a small gain into a big play. Spotted at the 37 now. And again, they try and get the same philosophy, a short pass and a crease for Tharp, and he tries to turn it into a big gain, and he'll get a good gain out of that. The little bubble screen with the blockers in front of him, and of course make a guy miss, and turn a little play into a big one. It's going to be an eight yard gain. They call it nine here, so we will as well. Second and one from the 28. Again is Brown. Good pursuit. First man there, number 33, Tharp. Going to get him a first down, though. Take a look at Lee Vickers there in on the coverage as well. Well, I'm impressed with Vince Brown, his ability to run with the football. Both are catching it on running plays. He's done a good job. 
Good pursuit by Vickers. First guy to actually hit him, though, is Tharp down right there. Turns him around, and Vickers finishes the tackle, but it is a first down. They're actually inside the 25. Looks like they got the blitz coming again. Dude, it's all out blitz. Oh, he's got a blocker there, and that's a nice bit of running by number 10, Reynolds. Good block out there. Let's give Parker credit as well. When you get your receivers out there making meaningful blocks, he was out there trying to help Parker, and he did turn it into a significant gain. That's another nine-yard pickup. Nine-yard gain on the play. We're going second down the short. They've kind of got North Alabama reeling on on their heels right now. They look a little confused. Obviously, they're mixing in the run very well with the pass. And, that, and it's been successful right now. Going to get him the first down straight ahead is Vincent Brown. Well, we'll see. If just we talked in the first half repeatedly how Valdosta had two first and goals inside their 10 and held one to a field goal and forced the other one to be a fourth down do or die situation. This is the first time we're going to see North Alabama now kind of backed up, see if they can uh, stiffen their spine a bit. Well, I'm shocked. I just saw, I, I had just noticed they just brought back in Marcus Jackson, Kendrell Turner, uh, Damon, Pre those guys have been on the sideline during this drive, and, and I didn't notice that they've been on there the whole series. They've run a lot of different guys in and out there. Brown has been mostly involved. He's had Reynolds involved in it, but uh, they just came off the cell and uh, third down uh, short for the Blazers. I don't know whether they're trying to give him a breather or uh, maybe they did it after that long run. Well, he's got Reynolds out here wide to the left. And I called it a first down a bit prematurely. It will be a third and in inches. Out here all by his lonesome wide to the left there is Reynolds. He's got right. Milton. Willie Milton in the backfield along with Vincent Brown. Now wait a minute. What's Valdosta doing in the wishbone? Get a quarterback sneaking out of there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> could, have lined, could have lined up in anything. All he was doing was taking the snap and uh, sticking his head down for a first down. That's just what they did, did Wilkes. And so now we'll see what the Lions defense can do. Backed up deep in their own territory here, the first possession of the second half. Well, Mr. Brown has been the well, he had, big threat. He had that big third down reception on third and long and turned it into a first down and kept this drive alive. That was clearly the big play. Throws to the corner of the end zone over the head of number 82, Derek Tharp. He's well covered. He had to put too much arc on the ball to get it, arch on the ball to get it to the receiver, and consequently it fell incomplete. Coach corner move. Clearly one of Coach Hatcher's very favorite down here inside the red zone. I have seen it score many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> you and most of the, the North American Division II football community, Coach. There's no question about that. Chris Hatcher is 66 and 8 in his sixth year as the head coach at his alma mater. We'll see some crossing routes taking place here. Here they go. Crossing, see him inside, crossing. There's a back in the flat. Juggling catch, and the ball's on the ground, and it's going to be a, a completion, a fumble, and a turnover. How about that? How quickly things can ch change. Willie Milton had the reception, but coach, he never really caught it cleanly. And as he tried to turn up field, he was hit. Let's watch it again. Very physical hit there, though. It, it, it uh, you know, obviously he needs to hold on the ball, but, uh, but he, he's juggling it a little bit. But that is a great hit. Number nine, nine. <coughs> in on the hit for North Alabama, Randy Banks, the sophomore from New Orleans. Actually, I take it back. It is number eight, at Santana Suggs, who makes the great hit. Let's give credit where it's due. It was a terrific hit. The junior free safety, and now that is the first turnover for the home team. And boy, what a costly one. They had all the momentum right out of the blocks in this second half. Now the Lions will go on the attack. And again, that defense has just been everywhere. Geo Blaylock. Number 37. 
What a terrific well, I, I was penetration going to, that was. I was just going to comment on what an emotional change that is in a game. You know, you take the first series and you move it all the way down inside the 15-yard line, and it looks like you're going to definitely have three points and take the lead, and then boom, you're up all of a sudden. Now you're out there on defense. What an emotional roller coaster that could be. And why that's such a significant play by Blaylock to turn the first down play into a three-yard loss. Second and 13. Now from the 13, they think to blunt. They've got a man. And a perfectly thrown ball, a great hit number by eight. number 19, Sean Harris. But that was put right on the money to Chip Long. number 83, Chip Long, who you have all night just been saying how significant he's been in their attack. He really is because that's, that, you know, they're trying, they're doing everything they can to stop uh, uh, Fountain and, and uh, Merritt and the blunt, uh, they've got those guys that are uh, what are you home run hitters and now you got a number 83 chip long out there just kind of ooh, somebody's kind of let him get free a couple well, of times he did well to hang on to the football there because again he uh, got he got hit hard after catching the ball and getting maybe one stride in but they were not able to pry it loose and so it's a first down at the 37. they go to the short side here and that's almost picked off where they are exploding to the football. Jason McNeil, he's already got one interception tonight. Almost got another one. I don't think I'd try that anymore. <laughs> I tend to agree. That was not how it was drawn up on the blackboard. Watch, McNeil, he is, oh, he is right in the middle of that. They're getting a great read on that little quick screen. Well, he's trying to, obviously, just them, you know, you, you look at the play, they're trying to get Blunt to block McNeil, and the pass is supposed to go to Fountain, but right. he couldn't even get a mid on him. <clears throat> He went right into the passing lane, almost turned it into an interception. Second and ten now. Oh, they're, they're coming after him here. A lot of guys coming here. They pick it up fairly well. He rolls to the right. And now he'll throw it away. They bought him a split second, but when nobody was open, Saylor took the wise decision and threw it to the sideline. Great coverage on the blitz. Uh, they, they had man coverage, and they did a great job of wrapping up those dangerous receivers. But, uh, you know, they're rolling the dice. because they wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, well, man. You know, you make a great point, which I would ask you about. In a game like this where you know you're going to have to score some more points and you want to create that turnover, but one play like that could be the big play that puts you in a big hole. That's got to be a tough decision. That's why these two guys are among the best in the country. They make those decisions as well as anybody. We'll see how aggressive they get here on third and ten. No tricks. Rush four. Long down the left sideline. And over the head of number 24, Jason Messing. He's the one that made the big catch earlier when they kind of threw it up there and let him go get it. Not able to pull that one down, so the defense stiffens for Valdosta to give up nothing on those last three plays. It's a fourth and ten, and they'll send the kicking unit out in the person of Lyle Atkinson. Well, that was a close call because it, it was just barely out of his reach. And we saw him make that catch in the first half. Atkinson shanked one for seven yards and then had a 43-yarder. See how he does here. That one's a little shaky as well off the side. And then he Sailor, not too pleased with it, knocks it back onto the playing field. Probably less happy that he's on the sideline. He'd rather have kept that drive going. But both defenses rise to the occasion. So we'll go about where we started this half, where Valdosta takes over just outside their own 40. Welcome back to Valdosta State University, where the score is 13-13. The Blazers knotted up with the Lions of UNA. Talking a little bit about Mark Hudspeth and Chris Hatcher. These coaches have played against each other and coached against each other. Back in 1991, both were quarterbacks, respectively, for Delta State and Valdosta State. Hudspeth led his statesman into Valdosta and fell to Valdosta State and quarterback Chris Hatcher 34-27. They're still battling it out now as coaches here in the GSC, and this one is sure to go down to the wire. Let's go back up to Bob Valvano in the booth. All right, Jim, thanks so much. They have had a very, very competitive history. Seven times in the last 15 meetings, they come into the game both nationally ranked, and in this case, not only nationally ranked, but in a part of a five-way tie for first place in this conference. Wilkes for a center screen again to Brown and a nice bit of tackling. Boy, hanging on for dear life was number 29 defensively for North Alabama, Edwan Williamson, but a good pickup by Brown. He's become their go-to guy in the second half, Jess. It's obvious that he's the guy that, that they're wanting to get the ball to here in the second half. They found something 
that they feel like it's a mismatch. Uh, getting, uh, you know, Brown. That's the thing. Hatcher does such a great job. I guarantee you at halftime, he he found a way to get the ball to somebody that in a in a miss, in a matchup that, that is working. And certainly, he he was the one that got the big gain on third down earlier, and that one is a big first down pickup of nine. And here he goes again, right up the middle for another big gain. A big hit by number 27, Blake Farris. And Santana sucks in as well, but not before. Vincent Brown carves out a big chunk of yardage. Takes it for a pickup of 17. Watch this, Jess, right up the gut. Yeah, that's great blocking up front, too. They did a super job. Of course, once again, as I've mentioned, they've, they've, they found a weakness. They found a little thing here, a little crumb, and they're going to it. Now Brown has been more than a crumb. He has been a jet. He has shown some explosiveness offensively so far in this third quarter. They go one more time, ride the hot man, but no, nothing doing this time. Nice tackle by number seven, Mantrell Ashford. It's one of those things, they wish they'd given it to number four then. <laughs> they faked it to him and handed it off to Brown. Four went around the end un unscathed. Yeah, it's probably because they, <laughs> they said what we've already said. You know what? I've noticed this guy Brown is having a big half. We better make sure we tackle him. Tackle a man with a ball. Don't mess those decoys. <laughs> Second and ten, no gain on that. Oh, here, here comes a blitz. 27 does a terrific job. Blake Farris, boy, he is been active here in this third quarter. He's the one that brought Brown down after that big gain earlier, and he came flying off the corner there to make a hurry on Wilkes and make some throw it away. He's livid at that wide receiver who didn't have the same read he had, because if he had have had the same read, that would have been a big play. The receiver was running another route, <laughs> and they had a hot, it's a hot principle. The blitz was coming, he had to get rid of it. <coughs> Wilkes did get rid of it. But incomplete for a third down and 10 now. Let's see what the Lions do. They blitz. They do blitz. And that leaves a man wide open in the middle of the field. A nicely throw ball. He's still on his feet now. Knocked out of bounds. His number 85, Zach Parker, knocked out by Marcus Jackson. But they did a good job against the blitz, giving Wilkes enough time to find the receiver. And Parker wide open and then did a nice job running after the catch, Jess. They, they said maybe our tight end is open also. <laughs> they don't play a lot of tight end. But here, <clears throat> you know, they got Zach Parker in there to Y. They call him Y. Uh, wide receiver, but he's really a tight end. What a great route, and what a super catch. Had a super run after Yeah, he did. He turned it, almost goal. took it all away. Knocked out of bounds at the seven. First and goal, and again, the Lion defense asked to rise to the occasion. Nice change of direction by Brown. The pivot to avoid being tackled right after the handoff for what would have been no gain. Turns it into some positive yardage anyway. Breeze is starting to kick up here finally after a very, very still night. Going from our left to our right a little bit. Not that right now it's significant, but Brown, you see, has put up some good numbers, especially after the intermission. 11 rushes for 36 yards is not so spectacular, but most of those have come after halftime. Second and goal at the four. And here he is going to take it in for the score. Vincent Brown, that's only fitting. He did most of the work on that drive, and he's into the end zone, and the Blazers have taken the lead. One of the things that you notice, is a, the coaches notice anyway, is the yards after first contact. And man, I'm telling you, these two drives, these first two drives, the second half, these Valdosta players have made lots of yards after the first contact by the nice, defense. Nice read there, too. We've got the little toss and got a little blocker. Willie Milton was out in front of him, and he reacted to the block, cut it outside, and waltzed it in. The point after is good by Michael Green and Valdosta has had the better of the play after this intermission, and they lead it 20 to 13. But we saw this movie in the first half as well. A good comeback by the Lions. We'll see if they can answer again when we come back. Well, the second half has belonged to Valdosta, and more specifically to number 14, Vincent Brown. He has been a demon in the second half. Take a look, look wide to the left. Passes to the right, though, to Vincent Brown, and he's turned it into a big game. Boy, that just... Southeastern Freight Lines, Lowell Engineering Associates, Mark Powell, and Southern Surgical Consultants. Here's Brown again. 
Now on the toss for the one that led to the touchdown. His numbers in the second half so far in two drives, he's accounted for 61 yards. At the intermission, he had just 11 yards rushing. He's now got 40 yards rushing. He had 32 yards receiving. He's now got 64 yards receiving. And Jess, you made the point. One of the things that's made Chris Hatcher so successful is finding matchups that he can exploit, especially in the second half. Well, as, as halftime adjustments are just so critical that you got to be able to go in there as coaches and decide, okay, what can we do in the second half? And of course, we always say the first five minutes of the second half is usually going to be the big factor. And right now, that's definitely in Valdosta's favor because they have come out in this first half and set the tone. That man in the back has been very quiet, number 21, Anthony Merritt. Can he do anything this time? He'll start from a yard deep in his end zone. There's a crease right in the middle of the field, and he's got some room to work. That is the kind of return we've come to expect from that guy. Anthony Merritt, the special teams player of the week. He's a little shaken up, hobbling a bit as he gets up, but he took that a yard deep in his end zone, and he brings it out across the 45 and gets his team good field position. The all-time career leader in punt return yardage in this conference. Six punt returns for touchdowns. Almost slipped in the end zone, but again, saw that crease right in the middle of the field, and he was off to the races. That's rushing roulette. You keep putting it back there enough times. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. And yeah, they have covered it very well all night long. He's still yet to run a punt back. Here's Blunt, who breaks a tackle, but not a second tackle. Geo Blaylock. Nice job defensively, brings him down. That's going to be a short loss. Great defensive play. And now they've got to parlay that great return into a momentum builder. And so far, they've had a difficult time doing very much of that in the second half. This Valdosta defense, very, very active. they got a three-man line now. They're expecting it. Obviously, the North Alabama throw the football, so they're going to get in coverage, looks like. Bring a fourth guy eventually, but they did a pretty good job picking it up, but they were not able to put it in the hands of number 83, Chip Long. They brought number 91, Tim Thompson. On delayed rush. Right? He just kind of... rush. He just put a little too much on that ball, looks like, that time. Finney Saylor, 15 of 28. A couple of picks. That's significant because he's been uncanny. In avoiding that so far this year. Coming into the game, he had 16 touchdown passes, thrown just four interceptions. Big third down. Third and ten. Again, they bring four. Sailors flushed out of the pocket. He throws. He's got him in. That is awfully close to the first down, number five, Rodney Steele. But they are going to rule it. An incompletion. So, doesn't matter whether he would have had it or not. An incomplete pass, and Sailor heads back to the sideline, disappointed as they are not able to maintain the momentum from that great kick return by Anthony Merrick. And now they have changed punters. They will bring number 39, Bo Tanner, in. He is, also does some of the place kicking for them. Kyle Atkinson has struggled a bit. Low snap. Nice job, and he gets it away. He did a nice job to get that one away at all. They'll let it bounce, and it's going to be a good bounce for North Alabama. So Tanner earns his keep right away. That was a dangerously slow, low snap. He not only was able to scoop it up, but turned it into a pretty good punt from his own 47. He puts them back down inside their own 20. So pretty good job by Tanner. That was a frightening snap. Take a look around the conference this weekend. Got a couple of other nationally ranked teams in this league. Central Arkansas goes to Washita Baptist. Arkansas Tech goes to Arkansas Monticello. Those are games that they will be clearly favored, even though they're on the road. A couple of four and four teams, Harding and Delta State. That'll be a big game there for those two. Our game is West Georgia and Henderson. That's the game of the week, Saturday. And that will be the Saturday TV game. Next week. With Don Russell and Jesse Branch. No, it won't be the game. Oh, it's, not. it's next weekend. You yeah. gave me the wrong information. Ah, Don't no set way. me up like that. Oh, a big hit uh, on number 10. Does a nice job turning it into some yardage. Sherrod Reynolds, good hit by Santana Suggs, but he some fancy footwork there to turn it into a game. Let's go down to the sideline. Jim? 
Bob, Sherrod Reynolds is known as the most dangerous guy on the Valdosta State team when it comes to offense and being a playmaker. The freshman's 5'10", 165 pounds. He's from Moultrie, Georgia. He leads the team in touchdowns this year with five, and he's doing a great job receiving as well as he's got 22 receptions for 373 yards. Coach Hatcher can't say enough about the freshman, how much of an impact he's made at such a young age. That Bob? Was, thanks, Jim. That was a unusual play because Wilkes bought so much time for himself. We've got a player down on the field. Before we do anything else, I believe it's Gerald Parker who's down they for Valdosta. Up. But he had so much time, started to roll to his right, and when he threw that ball, he had a man wide open, but so much air underneath it. And frankly, just that wind is starting to pick up a little bit, and I think it held it up just enough, almost turned it into an interception. He sure did. Parker, good news, bounces back up and makes his way to the sideline. Yeah, they can't afford to lose another offensive lineman. They, they are thin at that spot already. We started to comment on that punt on the last time. It was, it, it was so close, so close that his knee bit on the ground when he received that's, that snap. Yep. That's the thing you fear as a, as a coach of, of that happening. But the official was right there to watch. Nice defense that time by Darrell Ashford. Flags all over the place, bodies flying, some tempers flaring. The crowd doesn't particularly like the fact that Dusty Shack took a shot at Barrett Wilkes. He, of course, pleads his innocence, but we will wait for the officials and referee Thomas Graham to straighten it all out. right here Whoop. makes one guy to miss and then another one oh that could have been a hole <laughs> that's what the coaches were out yeah. right on the sideline yeah, about the jersey. Yeah, there he is right there he saw it it was a little bit of jersey of number four, 27 Blake Ferris I'm not sure that had any effect on the play well, that may be why they didn't call it <laughs> but I don't think Vincent Brown needs a whole lot of help right now he is he's on having, fire he's having a field day in this half to him again and a lot of room again they are dominating the line of scrimmage and another first down on the tackle is Marcus Jackson but a little bit too late for the liking of Mark Hudson because that is another big gain for Brown to pick up a 14 where they are opening some nice holes but he's making the most of those holes Jess he sure is but I'm I'm, uh, I'm still looking for Kentrell Tanner that uh, defensive lineman that's normally out there, number 93. Uh, there he is. He's right there on the center now, I see. Oh, they do a nice job there. Just when they needed a play defensively, Donald Tharp makes a big play on Sherrard Reynolds. That was a terrific reaction, and instead of those eight-yard pickups that they've been getting on first down for second and short or 
big gains for a first down. This is a big loss. Going to back him up eight yards. Well, you know, he's had six and a half sacks for the season, so he is a, an aggressive football player. As Donald Tharps I'm talking about, he, he, he plays in that backfield. Read that beautifully. Not fooled at all. Now a second and long back at the 33. A little bit of pressure. Nice job defensively. That was they number 11, well Marcus Jackson. Just making Barrett Wilkes uncomfortable enough to throw it perhaps a little bit hurriedly, and, and he throws it incomplete. It was well covered, though. I don't. It wouldn't have made much, I don't think, unless he broke a tackle, which he's done a lot of here in the second half. Now, this is a big defensive stand for North Alabama. I know they don't want to go down two scores as the time runs short here in quarter number three. As you said, though, they, they were within 52 yards of a field goal. <laughs> Your this, man could hit that one. The wind, though, is kicked up, and it would be in his face right now. If it were going the other way, I'm fairly certain he would get it there. But they're not trying for a field goal yet. There's a man open, and he's got him. And it's going to be short of the first down, but a nice reception by Clay Calloway. Now they're clearly in field goal range, <laughs> wind or no wind. It's going to be a fourth and about three. Nice, Nicely thrown ball by Wilkes here. He got time, had a man open, and he does a nice job, Calloway does, to hang on to it after the hit. They've done a great job protecting here in the second half, too. Their offensive line has is, is, is really done a super job. I'm sure they were challenged at halftime. To... Michael Green will try a 36-yarder into a slight breeze, but he's got plenty of leg on it, and it is through, and that is going to make it a two-score lead for the home team. Just like they started the game, 10 unanswered points. There's 10 unanswered points in the second half as well. North Alabama answered in the first half. We'll see if they can here in the second half as well. Valdosta by 10. Well, as Yogi Berra would say, it's deja vu all over again. If you're just joining us, Valdosta State started this game with a 48-yard Michael Green field goal and then a Clay Callaway 28-yard touchdown reception from Barrett Wilkes to go up 10-zip. UNA answered, though, with 13 unanswered points, a couple of Utah Fakuda field goals, and then a Vinnie Saylor quarterback sneak. Right before the half, Green kicked a field goal, and we went into the intermission tied at 13. But again, 10 straight points. That one you just saw, a nine-play drive, culminating in a field goal to put the Blazers up by 10. And here goes the master again, Merritt, and this is a bigger one than the last one. He won't get to the house, but he will get inside the 30. Jess, I believe the term you used earlier was you keep playing with fire. Eventually, you get burned. In the first half, they defended him brilliantly. No punt returns at all, and they really contained him in the kicking, in the kick returns as well. But now his last two have been 47 yards, and then this big one that takes it all the way inside the 25. Wow. That 17-yard average deep <laughs> kickoff coverage is fixing to get change if they keep kicking it to that guy. Uh, he, he's just a... Oh. <laughs> well, you know what's amazing is at the end of this, he looks like he's hobbling a little bit. If you remember the last return, he came up and looked hobbled a little bit. Right here, he looks like he's laboring a little bit. Look at that. He looks like he's fighting it a bit. And in fact, he eases off. And by easing off, he pays for it a bit as he is drilled by number 43, who actually uh, bumped him out of bounds. 31 with the, uh, the stop there, and it was a dramatic return yeah. by Merritt, who gives his team a chance Boy, to get back in the game. And Valdosta's defense is just taking on a new look here early in the or in the second, uh, third quarter. Uh, they're giving up nothing. Got four on that one. They'll get more here. So I, as I mentioned that, immediately they start to... <laughs> well, this, but Jess, you made a great point. They they did this at the start of the game. Yeah. If you remember the yeah. beginning of the game, and you even heard Chris Hatcher say it as he went to the locker room, how proud he was of his defense. Jerron Fountain with the carry there. But I think they exert so much energy maybe in the in the uh, first quarter of each half that they maybe slack up a little bit in a second. We'll see. But... And they'll try again Fountain, and he's going to get hit. Drop, number nine, makes the first hit for Valdosta. Wayman Ford. That was a third and one, and they backed him up, and they may not get a first down out of this. 
<clears throat> and they will have to send the place kicker, Utah Fukuda, out there. He has a slight breeze at his back. The holder is A.J. Milwee. He'll put it down pretty Four much right down. at the 25. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. Two for two on the night. This would be a big one to get them back to one score. And he does just that. The kickers have done pretty well for themselves tonight. Could at least make sure that that great return by Merritt does not go to waste. I must admit, I was a bit distracted because he got a pretty good lick put on him on that return, and I believe it was the kicker who finally brought him down, wasn't it? I think it was. I think it was Michael Green who finally was the one that prevented that from being even more. Coach, as your head coach, you got to like when your kicker's in there being a football player, Jess. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, go make a tackle. <laughs> uh, this is uh, deja vu, I'm afraid, here. It's looks like <laughs> as I said, I said as we came back last break, it was how the game started. Ten straight points, and things turned around. But instead of looking back, let's look forward, because uh, earlier, I believe we might have misidentified an upcoming game, so let's give you the right one as we look ahead for the Gulf South Conference Game of the Week. It is yeah. West Alabama and Henderson State. My broadcast partner knows a little bit about Henderson State. That's old a stopping ground. That's our next game. That's a uh, televised game. It'll be a week from Saturday, right? There you go. I, uh, West Georgia and Henderson is this week, and uh, that's, that's another team that's still in the race. Uh, West Georgia with only one loss. They're the other part of the log jam, and uh, obviously uh, that's a big game for them. There's, oh. there's, four, there's three other games that... Obviously, there's going to be four teams probably tied to the lead again after the next weekend. Take, I, take, I'm, not, I'm not prognosticating any, but I think that there's a good chance that could happen. Take nothing for granted in this league, though. Everybody on any given day, especially, it may be a cliche, but it's true here. Pretty good return by Thank number you. 10, Sherrard Reynolds. Not quite as dramatic as Merritt's, but he gives his team good field position again after kickoffs. Valdosta State has taken over in pretty good field position every time, rarely inside their 30. We'll see if they have an answer now. We've mentioned it twice, but if you're just joining us, 10 unanswered points to start the game for the home team. They wound up down 13-10, tied it at the half, started this half with 10 more points unanswered. UNA answers on that last possession with a field goal to cut it to seven, and we'll see if Valdosta can seize the momentum back here as they start at 32. Big half for Vincent Brown. He is the Vincent workhorse the after the intermission. A good, car a good gain again on first down. Going to be a pickup of about six on that one. Well, Doug Waller, the big nose guard, got him a handful of jerseys, laying that on the field now. <laughs> but he ripped loose from that thing. I mean, he tore a jersey right off of it. That will be all she wrote here in quarter number three. But a good one for Valdosta. They take what was a tie at the half, stretch it to 10 at one point, but now still find themselves up by seven, trying to get more. They'll have a second and three when we come back at their 39. Up by seven after three quarters in Valdosta. When you got kickers driving guys out of bounds like that, you know it's a hard-hitting game. <laughs> that was the great return by Merritt a few minutes ago. Driven out of bounds by the kicker, Michael Green, for Valdosta. And they now take the football as we start the fourth quarter, moving from our left to our right in a direction where the wind has appreciably kicked up. It is going to add a few more possible yards on a field goal attempt. And, boy, every possession is going to be big, so that may be significant. We'll see. Just keep throwing it in the hands of Mr. Brown, and he is going forward. Every opportunity he gets is going to be close to a first down. Boy, he, first down. he has really been a physical back here in the second half. I know he's been a physical back, I'm sure, all year, but he has really stepped it up a notch here in the second half. 
Well, we talked about he came into the game averaging 6.3 yards a carry. He was really held in check in the first half. Now you're starting to see how he's put those kinds of numbers up there. Pushes the ball out to the 43 for a first down. Quarterback. You know, when you've got that kind of a threat, lots of people went with Brown. He didn't have the ball. Wilkes did. He's brought down by Dusty Shack. Good gain, though. Down to the 49, pick up of six. Once again, the coaching staff at uh, Valdosta has done a great job in the second half of mixing up their offense. I mean, they are they're making it tough for the defensive coordinator. Well, you watched that replay and saw uh, three or four defenders go with Brown. It opened up a wide running lane for Wilkes. He turned it into a six-yard game. Now they give it back to Brown, but well, he broke a tackle. Boy, he was wrapped up by number 90, Doug Waller, but able to get out of that and turn what was going to be no gain or maybe a small loss into at least a gain of a couple of yards. He got about half of the four yards. He needed more than that, actually. It's going to be very close to the first down. The down indicator says one, but that is not right. It is a third down. It will be third and about a half a yard. North Alabama is making many substitutions there. They're trying to keep their people fresh. They've got their first group back in there in the defensive line now. And this is a critical situation because of out of one more first down there in field goal range. It's got to go to Brown, does it not? Let's see. It does. And he goes. And he's got it inside the 45. Yeah, one more first down and you're definitely in field goal range. You may be there now. I, I just, it's amazing. <laughs> it was so calm when this game started and it just gradually picked up the wind in the third quarter and now it would definitely be a factor. I mean, it would carry that football Wilma, a few extra yards. Wilma is on her way. Well, we'll I'm see afraid. Wilma's going to give a boost to a field goal here, although right now Valdosta obviously thinking mm. put seven on the board and that would be some breathing room. We'll see if they can continue this drive on the Lion 44. <laughs> Running back, same result. Willie Milton, nice gain. That's going to be another first down. Willie Milton with the carry. Front down by Brett Borden, but not before. Pickup of 11. And they are marching the football on the ground here. Well, they got four wide receivers in now. They've changed the game a little bit, but it's still, they're still running the football. Milton is in the backfield, and he's the one that just put that good run on the board. He'll try it again. Not this time. Number 11, Marcus Jackson there on the stop. They decided to load up the box then and not cover the four wide receivers. Uh, they actually had no one out here on the middle receiver to the wide field that time, and Coach Hatcher won't allow that to happen very long. Well, you certainly had to do something to stop this ground attack as they have just been marching it down their throats at the end of three quarters. Valdosta had been at 96 yards rushing. They're well over that now coming into the, uh, the last few plays of this drive. That oh, was a loss of a yard. They've totally changed it around. The possession time now is even. I mean, they, they brought it right back to... Oh, and another nice job defensively as they gave the ball to Milton again. But he stopped for another loss. And they have risen to the occasion. Both these defenses, just when you're about to think... The offense has something going that's got them solved. They dig their heels in. A good stop by number 46, Tim Hunt there. Two-yard loss brings up a third and 13, but this was on the earlier drive where Vincent Brown made that big, big play and turned a third and long into a first down. He's back in the ball game, along with Milton in the backfield. Rush four down the field, over the head, and almost intercepted off the fingertips of number 15, Clay Calloway. And then behind the play was Carlos Foster, who was almost able to get come up with that interception. You take a look at it again. <laughs> Boy, we just, had, just had a little too much heat on this ball. I mean, he really he had him. Well, that's where you wonder, Jess, about mm -hmm. the wind. As I said, it's yeah. kicked up a little bit. Yeah. It's at his back. Might have been just enough to push it over the receiver's head. And now they're just a little bit out of field goal range. It would be well, I'm telling you, in a, in a pinch, I still think he could get it there. He'd be a 53-yard attempt, and I think he'd have a shot at it, but they're going to let Tidwell punt it away here. He tries to just pop it inside the 20, and if they down this, it's going to be perfect. 
They batted around a little bit, but I think they'll manage to keep it out of the end zone, and they do. Brilliant job there by the special teams. And if the Lions are going to get this game even, they're going to have to go 99 yards to do it. A great job by Tidwell, putting it at the one-yard line. The length of the field on the horizon for the Lions. Twenty-three sixteen Valdosta on top. Anthony Merritt is seventh in the country in all-purpose yards, eighth in the country in receptions per game at 8.0, and his explosive kickoff return a few moments ago led to the field goal for his team that cut this 10-point lead down to seven. But we said he looked like he was shaken up on the punt return prior to that, laboring at the end of that kick return. So let's get the latest on his condition from Jim Caval. Bob, I had a chance to talk to the trainers and the team doctor from the University of North Alabama. Both say that Merritt will be back. It was a deep thigh bruise, and he actually had that injury before the big run he made. If you notice, he was limping at the end of the run, and then the tough blow kicker into the wall added insult to injury. No pun intended there, but I'll tell you what. Vinny Saylor did exactly what he did to his team in the UCA game earlier this year. He reamed every guy just now on the sideline. He told him, listen, we need to make it happen. We need to make it happen now. Anthony made a great run. We did nothing with it. We need to do something soon if we want to win this game. You guys are acting like we're down by 21 points. It's a, it's a seven-point game. One touchdown, we're back in this. Bob? In order to get that touchdown, though, they'll have to go 99 yards. Terrific job in special teams by Valdosta covering that punt by Travis Tidwell. buy themselves a little bit of breathing room. Sailor busts ahead to get maybe a yard. Well, you got to be aggressive because you need a touchdown, but Jesse, to state the obvious, turn over here, and you are really making yourself have to dig out of a big hole with short clock. No question about it. They need to make a first down. That's going to be the big key. One first down, then you got some breathing room. sideline and that is going to be intercepted yep. beautifully played by number 22 Scott Foss one of the defensive captains for Valdosta and he had read that perfectly the senior from Rome Georgia was right on the receiver all the way as you watch it on the replay you got to throw this up and outside where only one person's got a chance to get it, and it's your guy, and he just let it hang inside a little bit. Of course, the wind may have been a factor, as you've mentioned a couple of times already. It is, It has picked up. You know, the UNA was a six, that plus 16 in turnover ratio, but uh, that's killing them tonight, isn't it? Well, only four. We've talked about it twice already. Only four turnovers all season coming into the game for Sailor. Four interceptions, rather. That's his third interception thrown tonight. Now the defense is asked to rise to the occasion, and oh, it looks like they're going to, but that man just continues to amaze in the second half. Vincent Brown, he was wrapped up in the backfield for what looked to be a loss, and he turns it into a big gain. I was just about to say they need their defense to respond, and it looked like North Alabama was going to get that response. Watch the replay. Watch how quickly he's hit right there but breaks out of the tackle of Lee Vickers and turns it into a first down run. The young man has had a great second half. He had a great ball game, but that really a second half, something special. Down to the 17 now. And they're gonna take a timeout. Barrett Wilkes. Yeah, they were stacked up in there pretty good. They, they, were, <laughs> they had them all on the line of scrimmage. Well, now you gotta take some chances because certainly with this wind, it's a chip shot field goal. For Green, it would make it a two-possession game. But by the same token, Valdosta could punch it in for a touchdown here. That gives them a lot of breathing room, so they certainly don't want to get too conservative, Jess. No, and I don't think they will. I mean, <laughs> I, I'll give them credit. They have played a great second half offensively and defensively. They've taken control of the game in these uh, this second half. You made the point at the intermission, the time of possession was about a seven-minute or so disparity in favor of UNA, and at the end of three quarters, it was down to 58 seconds. So Valdosta really has taken control in this third quarter, but this would be what they didn't do in the first half when they had that 10-point lead, and UNA started to make the run at them. UNA actually scored 13 straight points to take the lead. 
Valdosta was not able to answer until right before the intermission. This would be a big, big answer here to get themselves back up by at least 10 and maybe more. Right. Well, they, they've dominated the line of scrimmage so far in this half with the running game and the quick passing game. And with Mr. Brown, whatever he wants to do, they've done it in the second half. Let's see what. Fake again, and, they, and Wilkes keeps it, but no go this time. Good pursuit by number 45, Brett Borden. Boy, that's a middle linebacker, and I'll tell you what. That guy's played a heck of a ball game. We hadn't called his name many times, but he's an outstanding football player in the middle of that defense. They did a good job there, making sure that was no gain. Actually, a loss of a yard, they call it. So second and 11 at the 18. It's when you need to make a play. You need to break that ball loose some way, intercept the ball, do something defensively, because right now you can't afford to give up another three points, really. See if they go to Brown, who has been their hero in the second half. They're going to throw it. They're going to blitz him. Open, wide open. The blitz came. They picked it up, and he put it right in the arms of Derek Tharp. But there is a flag on the play, and it's coming back. Boy, he was wide open. He, uh, the man coverage, they picked up the blitz. And, of course, it's very difficult for defensive back to cover a guy on the entire field out there one-on-one -on -one for any length of time, especially when you got a quarterback that's as accurate as Valdosta. Well, that is going to be an enormously significant penalty. Evidently, they picked the blitz up because they were holding. And now that's going to back them up. Put the ball back at the 27-yard line. Still well within field goal range, but obviously more importantly than anything, it takes those points off the board. Fans are not real happy with that. Well, I, I can't can under understand why. <laughs> they went from <laughs> elation to they've still got some work to do now. That's a second now and 21. Second down the ball for the Blazers. Back to the miracle worker, but there's no miracle there thanks to Dusty Shack. He's made some fine defensive plays all night long, and especially in the second half, he got to Brown as soon as he received the handoff. And that is going to bring up a third down and 21. And now, you know, again, you're talking about a 45-yard field goal, which even though there's a significant wind and we've seen some powerful kick, kicking from uh, Michael Green, that's, that's not, no longer a chip shot, Jess. No. Well, and I also seen them coming real close to the blocks on the last couple that he's tried. So, you know, you never know what could happen in the, in the game. It, it, this thing's far from over. Yep. A little screen. They go back to Brown. Nicely defended. They'll bring him down at the 25. Quarterback took a heck of a hit, boy. They got to Wilkes. He's shaken up, holding his right arm. He's in some pain as he heads to the sideline. Hmm. We'll get an update on his condition as soon as we can. Brown got it down to just inside the 25. And now, let's see if we can figure out what the injury is as we watch it again. Wilkes pressured, driven to the ground by number 46, Tim Hunt. Hmm. That could be a shoulder injury there because it looks like he hit right on his shoulder on that artificial turf. Green, 42-yarder. Plenty of distance and straight through. The kickers have had a good night, and that one was right down Broadway. So it makes it a 10-point margin again. As Green again good. He's had three field goals from outside 40 yards tonight, and one of 36 yards, a perfect four for four, and his team is back up 10. So time running a little bit short for the Lions, but they are the number one ranked offense in the Gulf South Conference. We'll see what kind of an answer they have as they have to dig out of a 10-point hole on the road in Valdosta. A little bit less than half a quarter for the number 14 ranked North Alabama Lions to dig out of this 10-point hole. Bob Valvano with Jesse Branch, Jim Caval in Valdosta where Two teams in a five-way tie, part of a five-way tie for first place in this conference, both of whom have one loss already on the season. Valdosta 7-1 and one overall, 5-1 and one in the league. North Alabama 6-1 and one and 5-1. And, and just one of the other problems that North Alabama's got, just one loss overall, and yet they're not 
they're ranked 14th in the country and would not quite possibly get the NCAA uh, invitation right now. One of the problems they've had is they haven't were not able to add that 11th game to that schedule, and that's a difficult problem for many of these sure teams. Is. They're a good team, and not many people want to have them hang an L on them, and so they played only one non-conference game. The rest are going to be conference games, and so they really can ill afford to lose one to a team they are battling for the top spot with. Right. Both of these teams uh, have a hard time getting a, even a one double A team to schedule them because they are such good football teams and you don't want to take a chance if you're one double A of losing to Division Two, so they can't they can't get anybody to schedule them. So that does the strength of schedule is a is a factor. And so that's a, that's one of the things they couldn't do. They only played ten games. That's that's uh, makes, makes it, it tough. tough. Absolutely. Well that's one way to make sure that guy doesn't hurt <laughs> yeah. you is blast it out of the end zone. Michael Green, I've said it almost too many times tonight, but strong leg and he nailed that one and uh, Merritt caught it on the run in the end zone and thought better of trying to bring it out so they will start at their 20. Needing two scores, Vinny Saylor, as we mentioned, four picks all year, three tonight, and that is a big part of the story, but now going into what's an increasingly blowing gale, I don't want to call it a gale, but a, a strong breeze working from our left to our right, making his job even more difficult. They need two scores. Marcus Blunt on the ground for a short pickup, about three. They said Brown's been having so much uh, success with that same play. <laughs> Maybe we'll just do it for a while. Well, they could use Blunt to get hot. There's no question about that. He's a guy with a pretty good per carry average on the season, more than four yards a carry and six rushing touchdowns. He's been held in check, though, for much of this game. Now they'll go to the air. Good time. A little bit too far in front of Jerron Fountain. Yeah, Jerron Fountain in there. He just uh, he, he knew he's going to have to stick it in order to get it there, and, and rather than lay it in there, he didn't want to. He could have kind of lobbed it up a little bit, but uh, you know the guy would probably been minus a bunch of teeth, so he he stuck it in there and he stuck it in a little too hard. Sailor's numbers: 15 of 31. This is a guy who, on the season, is uh, completing 63 percent of his passes and uh, under 50% tonight, so that should give you an idea. That, uh, not the kind of typical performance for Sailor. There's a nice throw, though, but well covered. Does a nice There's job three to guys. hang on to it. Three guys just ripping him apart just as soon as the ball gets there. Chip Long, you've been impressed with his play tonight. He's been their go-to guy, and that is going to be spotted for a first down, obviously. Take a look at it again. Sailor zips it in there. One defender. Two, two defender, defenders, three, three defenders. defenders. And he does a good job hanging on to it. First guy oh, to hit him was number 13, Bernard George. First down for Mark Hudson's punch. You know, if any has not taken a sack tonight, but he's thrown those three interceptions, he's probably, just, you know, been a little hurried and throwing a little faster than he normally would like to. He's got a man to the right for it's going to be about a three-yard pickup. Jerron Fountain. And now they claim there's a fumble, and we're waiting for a signal. The officials don't seem to agree. That's a great pursuit of that defense. Oh, I, great Chris pursuit. Hatcher is beside himself. Fountain with the reception did a nice job of High-stepping it to get about three yards out of it. Here's the replay. We take a look. Ooh. They're trying to rip it loose on the way down. Ooh, that's a tough one there. A tough call. They rule he was down after a pickup of, now they call it four, second and six. Boy, they are on the receivers, though. There is not a lot of room for Vinny Saylor to fit that football. Man. I mean, they are stuck on them like wallpaper. They can't get. They're doing a great job defensively. I, I am truly impressed with the job that Valdosta State is doing here tonight, both offensively and defensively, and the kicking game. You just name it all. They, uh, they put on a show here tonight for their fans. Well, they have, you know, they're getting pressure on Sailor, and then he still has nobody open down the field. That's the right. worst possible combination. Obviously, right. nowhere to throw it and no time to get your receivers free. Third and six now from the 34. Boy, they're coming after him now. Has to get it away, and it is going to be a first down, and that's a pretty athletic play Merritt. by Vinny Saylor. Anthony Merritt 
the guy that is their leading receiver in terms of number of catches. And boy, they needed one there, and he got it for them. They have kept him pretty quiet tonight. They have bottled him up very well on the passing end. He makes a, <laughs> a big, big play there. And they needed him. He has stepped up. He made that big return. It's led to the only points of the second half for his team, a field goal. And now that was a big catch on third down to get his team. Three-man rush. And they're working on the coverage now. Look at that pursuit. Not much out there for Blunt. He caught the football, but did well just to get back to about the line of scrimmage. They want a penalty. Tackled him up high around the face mask, but no call, and it's going to be a second and ten. And they kept him in bounds, too, which keeps the clock running. When That's now becoming a critical factor. Ooh, that was close to a face mask, actually, but no call. Good coverage by Ford. No gain. sidearm sling and right on the money. Sailor moving to his left, threw it back to his right, and there's that man again, Chip Long. He has been the go-to guy, and he gets a reception good for a first down. Sailor made that look easy, Coach. He was going left, threw it back right, sure kind of side, slung it, put it right on the money. Sure did. He uh, excellent throw. Eight receptions, 131 yards for Long. He's having a big night. Delay and there's a crease there for Blunt, and he's going to turn it into a good game. Now they demand a fumble, and they still say no fumble. I, I believe that's going to stay UNA ball. That is two plays where the Blazers are thoroughly convinced they had the football. Let's watch this one again. Blunt turns it into a nice gain, spins back. Oh, the ball, oh, the ball is clearly oh, loose there. My. Wow. Oh, my. The other one was debatable. This one is not close, but Blunt is going to make the most of the opportunity. We're watching the replay there, and that was a tough call for the home team, but they're going to have to play through it because while you were watching that replay, Blunt just took the handoff, ran it straight ahead, and they're now down to the 15-yard line. you got to keep playing, guys. Of course, no one knows that any more than the coaches. Well, they've got some momentum now. They've got a hot runner in Blunt, but not that time. Not much there. Maybe a yard. Michael Cullen on the stop. Uh, we got a clock operation problem. They got the shot clock down to three seconds. That can't be right. No, that cannot be right. Setting it down. There we go. Going for the end zone. Jump ball. And touchdown. Tag goes to the offense. How about that? Boy, they have lived on the edge this entire drive. But again, that's the same play they ran to get the big gain in the first half. They threw it up in the air, let Jason Messing go get it. And he comes down with it. And suddenly, we got a football game. <laughs> Deja vu. Fakuda for a very important point after. And he's got it through there, and it is a three-point game. Well, they say you're going to have some controversial calls, some good calls, some bad calls. Got to play through all of them, Jess, and you got to make the uh, most of the opportunities that come your way. And Demarcus Blunt certainly did on that drive, setting his team up for a touchdown that has cut this to three. And we still got plenty of time left in Valdosta. Play dramatic touchdown. For the visitors from UNA, Jason Messing, they threw a jump ball up to the corner of the end zone. He went and got it, and that makes it now a three-point game. 12 plays, 80 yards, and this is going to be the ultimate test for the number one ranked defense in terms of points allowed in this conference. UNA, they've got to get a stop and get that football back. They still have all three of their timeouts remaining. They sure do, and it's a long way from over. And this... 
th just this may be a play that, depending on how this game turns out, is going to be talked about for a long time. Here's Blunt on that last drive, running with the football. He spins and gets hit from the back, and that ball is, and there's not much debate about that. It is on the turf and covered quickly by the defense by number 55, Carlos Russell. Take a look at it again. He's got a big gain working right here, and he is hit on the spin. There's the ball right there. Russell has it on the first bounce. They start celebrating. They ruled him down, and on the next play, he followed that up with an even bigger gain to take it down to the 15, and then that led to the touchdown. You, you certainly, you know, as cliched as it is, you have to make the next play, and nobody knows it better than that guy, Chris Hatcher, but, boy, that would have been a backbreaker for UNA. Yeah. You like to say that they go both ways, you know, that they probably go back and forth. You get as many good ones as bad ones, but you <laughs> there always seems to be something that happens in these big games that you just, you wish you had instant replay, and uh, that's the only way to solve it. And I'm not sure we could hit it, get it. Good we'll job. see. We'll, s we'll see that the, the challenge for Valdosta now to make it so that play doesn't matter. And right. in order to do that, they need some first downs right here. Another one of those high pop-up kicks. Taken by Reynolds, and he's stacked up at about the 30-yard line. Almost every possession Valdosta on kickoffs has started at the 30 or better. Good field position. And here is the man of the hour for them in the second half. Look at the numbers. First half, six rushes for 11 yards. Second half, 14 rushes, a buck two. How about that? Uh, yes. uh, you know, really, all you need here is two first downs, and uh, that's that's what they should be thinking. Uh, it, it, you know, find a way to make two first downs, running, throwing, whatever, make them use their timeouts, and the game's yours. Got to wind up in Brown's hands sooner rather than later, and he gets it on the first carry. Again breaks a tackle, almost breaks a second tackle. He has avoided... A evaded and avoided <laughs> backfield tackles probably four times in the second half. They could have been losses and turned them into decent right. gains. He I'd turned that into a five-yard pickup. I'd be real interested to know how many yards he has after first contact. I'm telling you, this guy has made some runs. This, and I, not only that, I love the way he was protecting the ball. I mean, he had that ball clutched, and he only used one arm, but he had three points of pressure, and nobody was going to get that ball out of there. Obviously, at this point in the game, that was huge, as was the fact he turned it into a five-yard game. They're halfway to one of those two first downs Jesse was talking about. They'll try him again, and he'll get the first down and a whole what bunch a, more. What a great move. A great move in the open field. Boy, he is just in the zone right now defensively. They say that when you get at a certain level, the game looks slow to you. It's moving in slow motion. The defenders must look like they're crawling to him because he is changing direction and finding creases. I think he's cramping up right now. Well, he should be. He's run enough yards. He's, he's had a track meet in a second. Look at the change of directions. Look at that. I mean, turns the defender completely around, turns Darrell Ashford all the way around. He is just seeing things faster than anybody else on the field and able to back it up with some explosive running. He is cramping up, though, trying to address that on the sideline. The give now is to Willie Melton, and he has stopped for a Loss again, Dusty Shack, who's done that a number of times in the second half. They got one of the first downs they needed, but this could be the one that puts it away for them, and that was a big stop that forced by Shaq. Forced them to use a timeout, obviously, yes. You know, that's what amazing. Brown's not even one of the top ten rushers in the league. I mean, they have so, they, they've so they got so many different players to do things. <laughs> they don't need anybody in the top ten. I mean, it's amazing. They are a true team. They are doing it like as, as a team tonight, offensively, defensively, on special teams, but their work is not quite finished. Need another first down. Take a look at what's coming up on the Gulf South Conference Game of the Week. It'll be my friend Don Russell I'll be joining Jesse Branch for the West Alabama Tigers at the Henderson State Reddies. In October 29th, 6 o'clock Central Time. And then November 3rd, Bob and I get to wrap it up up in Russellville, Arkansas with the Tech Wonder Boys. It's been some very entertaining football in this dynamic Division II conference. It is the best Division II football conference in all the land, and we are seeing it week in and week out. And these two powerhouses 
are going to slug it out right till the final gun. A minute 53 to go. Second down and 14. Brown is still out. The give is to Milton, who's going to get back to about the original line of scrimmage. And again, UNA will burn one of their timeouts. This is a third and 10 that it is safe to say, Jess, whatever hopes for the Lions are there are hinging on this play. I would have to say this is, uh, at this point, will be the most critical play in the game because uh, if they can stop them here and use another timeout and force them to kick it, obviously we have a eternity left. The key is if we stop well, this is a game that's obviously got tremendous ramifications in the in the conference, but how about for the Gulf South teams trying to get improve their rankings in the South Regional where we talked about only six go. There's four conferences and only six teams get to go. So right now, North Alabama and Arkansas Tech on the outside looking in. This would help the Lions chances tremendously to get a victory here, but they have an uphill battle. Valdosta State, of course, trying to put themselves more firmly with the opportunity to defend their national championship. Jess, it does lead to the question, though, right now, if you know you need one more first down to nail this thing down, do you run the risk of throwing the football here? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, that's one of those things. I, I'm going to let Coach Hatcher make that call. <laughs> well, we will see. <laughs> He's got a, I'm telling you what, I don't know what he'll do, but I'd have to say he'll probably do the unexpected and uh, we'll see. Three receivers to the left. Down here at the bottom is Zach Parker. It is third and ten. One timeout left for the Lions. You know they're coming after him. And they are going to throw it, and it's going to be short. Nice job defensively, and they take their last timeout. That's a good call. Great call. A high percentage pass. They got a good chance at a completion such as they got. So even though they don't make the first down, Brett Borden on the stop, by the way, they make the Lions take their last time out. Now, this is a tough call. This is a very difficult call. What do you do now? <laughs> it's fourth down. And about two and a half. Well, they've, done, you, they've had good success with the little pooch kicks by you, right. Tidwell. He buried them at the one-yard line earlier. And and you've got a field goal kicker that Mike could do it, but I wouldn't think I'd do oh, it. <laughs> I think that, that one is the most risky. I'm not sure. Much as I have great respect for Michael Green's range. You don't think a 57-yarder? 57 57-yarder with the possibility of a block and a disaster, I'm not sure. And if I miss, they give it to him on the 40? I don't think so. And as you said, Jess, he's a guy that will give you the unexpected. Remember he, the fake punt at Delta? He may a fake go punt, to the bag of tricks. Throw back to the quarterback. We've seen him do it all. And, uh, you know, and as I was talking to his AD last night, he said that's the thing that amazes you about him. He finds a way to get it done. And, uh, of course, the game's not over. I don't want to give it that impression because anything can happen, for goodness sake, for the minute and 40 seconds. Well, he sends the punting unit out there. Tidwell is back. He's got a very gu increasingly gusty wind at his back. He'll have certainly no problem getting this to inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be the exact opposite. He's going to have to make sure he eases up. Oh, my. High snap. He's got it, though. And there's the line drive kick. Fair catch called by Merritt, and he grabs it at the 14. So I would say that they've probably got to get the ball down to about the 25-yard line just with this wind to give Fakuda a reasonable chance. That'd be a 42-yarder into a breeze. With no timeout. No timeouts. A minute 34 to go. So they've got themselves about a good 60 yards to move the football to have any kind of a chance. We'll see what they can do. Hey, it'll be interesting to see if, if Valdosta backs off and just plays pre-vent defense, because that's one of the things that usually gets you in trouble. You know, if you give up a, a first down, stop the clock. So we'll see. Saylor organizes his offense. Those safeties are back there 14, 15 yards deep. Across the middle. First down, clock stops. Another nice throw and catch by Long. That's where they're going to give you anything if they give it to you in the middle of the field in this situation. You might as well take it. There's still plenty of time. They do a great job. Clock stops to move the chains, and they'll get reset. Sailor playing like the senior that he is. Great composure in this situation. And try and get to the sideline here, and they... Just barely do. Out of bounds is Blunt. 
no gain on the play, but they'll stop the clock at least. And give themselves a chance to call a play in a little bit more relaxed fashion. Jess, is that a problem here when you normally are signaling plays in from the sideline and trying to do it in this situation? Does well, they it have, take more time or less time? They have hot signals where they can go with no, in other words, the, the coach tells them exactly and it's, it's first sound and they can still do it. But what they want to do is get it out of bounds like that so you have time to call the play exactly like you want to. That's what they're doing right here. Right. Taking their time, making sure they're in exactly what they want on a second and 11 at the 33. Sailors got enough time to throw it behind his receiver long. He looked like he thought the pocket was collapsing on him, got a little happy feet for a minute, and then realized he had time, but threw it behind the receiver. Sure did. He's, he's a little bit off track because... <laughs> Hey, Long was down there. Just get it to him. I think he'll make the catch. Well, the crowd urging on the Blazer defense. Boy, the, they hadn't started the 25 second clock yet. I was wondering what was going on here, but uh, now it's begun. They got plenty of time, 20 on the play clock. Minute four left, as you see on your screen. Third and 11. They got the twist stunt coming at them. Pretty good protection. Not that, but now the clock's running now. Uh, it's not a first down either, unfortunately for the Lions. Short of the first down to Fountain, it is outside the 40, but now they not only have clock issues, they got to get a first down. It is fourth down and three at the 41. He's looking for Chip, I bet. Oh, that's going to be it. behind number five, Rodney Steele. Very well defended, and I believe a last gasp is going to come up a bit short for the Lions as these two teams continue their history of playing games that go right down to the wire, but it appears it's going to be three points too little for the Lions and a big, big win for the defending national champions. Yeah, it's, uh, if they can get a snap from center, the game's over. <laughs> well, with all the other challenges that both teams have faced tonight, I'm fairly confident they'll get the ball they'll snapped. They'll get a snap from center. What a great win for great that man, game, Chris right? Hatcher, who does just what is necessary for his team to win. They, You look at their stats, Jess, and there's nothing that jumps out at you as dominant, but what do, what is is 8-1 and 6-1 and, and, and tied for first in the league. Now a half game in front in first place. And the defending national champions. 90% wins. <laughs> that, num that number leaps out at you. But I'm telling you, this has been a great ball game to watch. It really has. Like I said in the beginning, it's just too bad that somebody has to lose, but that's the way the game is. And, and, and tonight it's North Alabama. Chris Hatcher looking for his counterpart, Mark Hudsmith. I like the line Joe Paterno used a couple of weeks ago. You know, disappointed for them, but certainly proud of them. And these coaches have to feel that way. Mark Hudson yeah. does. Got to be disappointed with the loss, but proud of his guys. And Chris Hatcher's got to be elated as his team gets a big 26-23 win. Two teams that were in a five-way log jam for first place. Well, now at least for a few days, Valdosta State will be a half game in front in the Gulf South Conference. And we will see how it shakes out this weekend with the other three teams that were in pursuit. But a big win for Chris Hatcher. Runs his record now to 67 and 8. Amazing. And with the winning coach, let's go down to the field. Here's Jim Cabell. Coach Hatcher, an incredible win at the GSC TV game of the week here. Crowd came out to support your team. Your defense played very well down the stretch. Talk about the win and what it means for your team. Well, this is a huge win for us. It puts us in line for another conference championship if we can finish the season off. But um, it was a great win for our football team. I thought our defense played exceptional the entire night. And then offensively, we moved the ball up and down the field. We just had a hard time getting it in the end zone. But it's a great, great win. We had a great atmosphere. First Thursday night game here in a long, long time. And I'm very excited and proud of our football team for the victory tonight. Talk about the Gulf South Conference quickly. Last week, you played one of the weaker teams, and they gave you some trouble, West Alabama. And tonight, UNA gave you a great game. It's just such a tough conference. Talk about what it means come playoff time coming out of this conference. It's probably the toughest conference um, in Division II football from top to bottom. Um, every team can, can win on any given day. Um, this year, it's been a little bit tougher because it seems there's so much parity involved in the league. But you better be ready to show up each and every week. 
we still have a long ways to go, and the big thing we got to do is make sure our helmets fit on Monday morning. Well, congratulations on the big win, Coach, and good luck in the rest of the season. Thank you. <laughs> Coach Hatcher, back up to you, Bob. I've heard it described a lot of ways. Thanks, Jimmy. I've heard it described a lot of ways, Jess, but that is one way to put it. Make sure your helmets fit on Monday. <laughs> Don't get no big head now, boys. But I tell you what, they played a great ball game tonight. I, 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 I'm just, you know, amazed at, at, at why there was, it was two different halves. And actually, it, it, first half was his uh, defense, second half was his offense, and it was just amazing. And Vincent Brown, Vincent Brown, so terrific after the halftime break, helps his team get to 6-1 and one in the conference. That puts them a half a game ahead of Arkansas Tech, Central Arkansas, and West Georgia. North Alabama drops to 5-2. and two. It was a great one for all of us here, for Jesse Branch, Jim Cabal, and all of us involved in the Gulf South Conference Game of the Week. A reminder, join us Saturday, October 29th for West Alabama and Henderson State. This is Bob Valvano saying goodnight with a final score. is Valdosta State 26 and North Alabama 23. Good night, everyone.